Yo, what is going on guys? It is the Ultimate Frozen Fan back here for a uh, bonus video of Pikmin 2 before we end off the uh, the game for good and start on Pikmin 3. Uh, I, we are just going to be uh, really quickly going through uh, the entire Piklopedia and all the treasures uh, so there's because uh, there's some good stuff here. So we're going to be doing a little, uh, little reading and explaining and stuff. So to start things off, we shall go with... Oops. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, here we are. Alright. So, here is your standard red bull board. All of our says, Red bull board. Oculus Gilgris Grub Dog Family. This large organism has familiar mandibles and cranial morphology of the Grub Dog. Of the Grub Dog Family, as well as the characteristic bulging eyes as with most Grub Dogs. The creature's cranium comprises half of, of, of its total length and girth. Showing a scarlet abdomen with white spots, this creature is primarily nocturnal, choosing to prey upon smaller creatures returning to their nests, originally classified as the spotty bulbor. Further research has classified this species as, a, as the, the red bulbor. Subspecies of varied colors have recently been discovered, but academics are divided into two rival camps over, over how to handle their classification. Oops. So now we'll go ahead and read Louie's notes. Plump specimens are best spit roasted whole, stuffed with lime and a slab of bacon, based frequently to ensure a, a magnificently moist haunch. So, yeah, so <laughs> all, all of Louie's uh, notes are going to be about how to cook them and eat them. Louie wants to eat the creatures in Pikmin. <laughs> how weird is that? I, I swear, I have no idea what to make of Louie, what he is or what, but. And we got a hairy bull borb. Hairy bull borb. Grub dog family. This subspecies of grub dog has a thick coat of soft white fur fur that obscures its ab abdominal markings. The fur also warms its vital organs, making this species well adapted to colder climates. However, its hair follicles are surprisingly frail, which can result in immediate hair loss if the creature is surprised. Remove all the bulborb's hair, wrap the beast in foil along with a halved lemon, and place it directly on the grill. The foil should protect the carcass from scorching, and the lemon will give the meat an elegant hint of citrus. Orange bulborb. Grub dog family. This bulborb species boasts a grayish colored pattern with a deep orange body and black spots. The orange bulborb's yellow bloodshot eyes make it clear that this grub dog is excessively edgy and high strung, making it much easier to wake from deep sleep than other species in the bulborb family. This bulborb meat flanks, flanks make for saliciously uh, savory steaks that shouldn't be missed. <laughs> Dwarf red bulborbs. Bread bug family. Although initially identified as a juvenile red bulborb, groundbreaking new research indicates that this creature is in fact a member of the bread bug family, a closer relative of the vanilla bread bug. It escapes predation through mimicry. Unique adaptation in the red bulborb's crimson coloration allows the species to safely commingle. Such effective adaptation and uh, 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 obfuscation by prey species is rare, indicating this clever creature is a master of mimicry. So yeah, so what he just said there, um, these two species uh, of bulborb are in no relation to each other. These are not baby bulborbs, and this is not an adult bulborb. These are two different types of species. This is bulborb is a member of the grub dog family, all, as well as the giant ones. This one is the bread bug of the bread bug family, which uh, bread bugs are the ones that look like a loaf of bread that walk around and steal our stuff. You remember from Glutton's Kitchen? And they actually apparently can change their form to mimic that of a, of a bulborb, but they are not actually bulborbs. Very, very interesting. Snow bulborb. Oh, wait. We didn't look at Louie's notes, did we? For a blissful bisque, mince the entire beast finely and stir with heavy cream. Our artichokes, hearts, and a pinch of black pepper. Heat slowly until piping hot. Mmm, rich and creamy. Louie, what the hell is wrong with you, my dude? 
Snow Bulborb, Bread Bug Family. Like the Dwarf Red Bulborb, the Snow Bulborb is a member of the Bread Bug Family that seeks to survive through imitating the appearance and behavior of a Bulborb. Its pale coloration and blue spots make for easy identification. In particular, this organism mimics the Hairy Bulborb, but it is, of course, unable to grow the hair that gives the Hairy Bulborb its name. However, as the Hairy Bulborb has been known to lose its hair in certain circumstances, the Snow Bulborb is an effective mimic that is often mistaken for a member of the same species. Best grilled and served over a bed of fresh spinach and crumbled blue cheese. Red bug family, dwarf orange bulbar. Just as dwarf red bull bugs mimic the appearance of red bull bugs, it was theorized that an orange bulbar mimicking variant must also exist. Recent field work has confirmed this theory. Dang it, for the frat loop. Although difficult to prepare, this exquisite creature is more than worth the effort. Great in fajitas. Spotty Bull Bear. Spotty Bull Bear, Grub Dog Family. A mid sized subspecies within the Grub Dog Family, the Spotty Bull Bear's unique feeding habits set it apart from other Grub Dogs. The Spotty Bull Bear patrols the set path searching for prey instead of passively feeding on creatures that wander into limited territorial range. When entering Bull Bear habitat, it is wise to proceed with extreme caution until the Bull Bear's patrol path can be clearly identified. Ain't that the truth? For an unrivaled green curry peel away, away that spotty bull bear skin, pulverize the juicy innards and store until curiously fragrant. Dwarf bull bear. Grub dog family. A grub dog larva in its third stage of development. This creature's body structure is nearing maturation. However, unlike mature bull bears, it is yet to claim its own patrol route, and thus is dependent upon the parent for guarding direction. Okay, so these ones are actually baby bull bears. And yeah, so the big ones are the parents, so th those ones actually are of the same family. Remove innards, stuff with sage, and finally age prosciutto. Broil until golden brown, the ultimate crowd pleasers. Bull borb larvae, ew, those things. Grub dog family. As its name implies, this creature is a bull borb in an early stage of development. It is distinct bull bear coloration that is yet to appear, but it already exhibits other unique only bull borb characteristics. It is capable of hunting nourishment independently without the help of its parents. Yeah, as soon as it's born, it comes and starts freaking attacking our captains. The merger creature offers little meat, but its eyeballs are a local delicacy. Try them with orca, a doll, and a dollop of sour cream. Fiery bull black scrub dog family. Bodily excretions of a highly flammable waxy, waxy substance interact with the cell structure of the grub dog skin, causing a chemical reaction that produces extremely high temperatures. The skin benefits from spongy cell structure that diffuses the heat, protecting the creature's inner organs. Due to the astonishing amount of heat produced by this piece, it should be observed with great caution. No stove, no problem. This sizzling beast practically cooks itself. Remember to thoroughly extinguish the steaks prior to eating. Alright, that's all the uh, uh, bulb. Oh no, wait, no, we're, we're, uh, no, we're still on the bulb orbs, because this. Uh, okay, so when you see this here, water dump bowls of the grub dog family. A resident of freshwater pools and marshes, this aquatic creature regularly feeds on insects that land on the surface of the water. It shares a nearly identical skeletal structure with its close relative and terrestrial cousin, the bulb. This may offer clues to its evolutionary origin and suggest that it only recently immigrated to an aquatic habitat. So the water dumple is actually an aquatic bulb orb. I keep forgetting these ones. Deep fry dumples with, without batter for all the flavor with half the fat. Bulbman, Pikmin family. 
This loathsome creature is in fact a parasitic form of Pikmin that has infected a bulwark. Unlike Pikmin that nest in Pikmin onions, this parasitic relative spends its life inside the body of a host, usually a bulwark. Juveniles fall in the line and mimic the actions of their parent until maturing to full independence. By burying its root-like limbs into the nervous system of the host bulwark and infusing it with natural hormonal ex ex excretions, the Bulbman family is able to control virtually all of the host's bodily functions. However, the host's uh, voracious appetite seems impossible to surpass. To press. Oops. Grind that meat and season with allspice, salt, and ground white pepper. Press the seasoned meat into meat satchels, then pan fry with pan fry them with onions prior to serving. Smother the brats with Dijon, Dijon mustard and sauerkraut. Buns are optional. So he wants to eat them like a burger sandwich. Okay, next up is the fiery blowhog. Blowhog family. This creature expels a volatile phosphorus compound from its snout that combines upon contact with the air. The fire breathing ability is dependent on the air to fuel ratio at its mouth. Catalyst reaction within expelled compound and purification of the compound. Thus, it is highly unlikely such a process could cause the spontaneous explosion of a fallen blowhog. This process is also perhaps to avoid risk of spontaneous combustion in the belly of a live specimen. However, one should still treat a fiery blowhog with great care, even after its life functions have ceased. Roast the flavorful beast for several hours, letting it stew in its own succulent juices. Don't worry about overcooking this beast, it's scorch proof. Watery Blowhog, Blowhog Family, a variant subspecies of the Fiery Blowhog. The Watery Blowhog lacks several of the dominant genes necessary for the production of fire. Fire producing catalysts and thus expels jets of non flammable liquid. This subspecies appears to have only recently evolved. However, the hereditary traits of this variant are dominant and highly robust, so its population is rapidly increasing. This beast's unrivaled moistness gives it a melt-in-the-mouth quality that's incomparable. Armored Cannon Beetle Larva Lithopod family. This specimen is a lithopod larva. This expedition was unable to confirm the existence of any mature lithopods, leading to concerns that the species was extinct on this planet. But the discovery of the creature in larva form eased such concerns. Lithopods, like flint beetles, use use internal uh, metabacteria to aid the chemical digestion. These metabacteria can only survive in certain environments such as within the body of certain insects. So lithopod larvae do not contain any metabacteria immediately after hatching. Larvae feed on par partially digested or regurgitated by mature lithopods, ensuring the larvae obtain metabacteria they would not normally have acquired. Carefully remove every grain of sand, peel back the exoskeleton, and slurp heartily. Okay. Decorated Cannon Beetle, a uh, lithopod family. This creature is the larval form of the Cannon Beetle, a variant known for a diet consisting entirely of eating stones. The decorated cannon beetle favors stones with high iron content, which contributes to its brilliant red torso. The stones these creatures launch are wrapped in a powerful magnetic field which causes the stones to stray from their launch trajectory. When other objects with high metal content, such as spacesuits nearby, extreme caution is recommended for explorers wearing steel-plated armor in close proximity to this fearsome creature. Slice the meat into tender cutlets and vigorously apply lime and pepper rub. Pan fry until lightly crusted, accompany with watercress and drizzle with freshly prepared tamarind sauce. Puffy Blowhog, Blowhog Family. This, this species of blowhog uses internally generated hydrogen to inflate a flotation bladder and hover above the ground. The creature's electrified pulse creates a sash of color that flows along the surface of its body, making it a particularly beautiful blowhog species. Precise whoops. Hang on, sorry guys. Making it a particularly beautiful blowhog species. Precisely how it was able to internally stabilize its highly explosive hydrogen and simultaneously generate electricity remains a mystery. 
The puffy blowhog blows leaves and grass around to keep the insects underneath. It maintains mid-air buoyancy by using fins and releasing air through blowholes. This enables it to float effortlessly, even in the breeze. In times of danger, the puffy blowhog can deep decompress its flotation bladder for a rapid escape from predators. Slice the creature's feather-like skin into triangles. Deep fry until crispy and salt generously. It makes the perfect scooping chip to accompany fresh mango salsa. Withering Blowhog, Blowhog family. The Withering Blowhog is a close relative of the Puffy Blowhog, but it, uh, it's underneath, but its breath is significantly weaker. However, its breath does contain a petal withering plant hormone that causes flowers to instantly lose their petals. Although its breath has not been studied in detail, analysis of the chemical compounds involved hold great promise for the biotechnology biotechno sector. Hang this creature on a rack and sun dry on a hot afternoon when suitably crisp. Grind the sun dried beast into powder. Makes a great substitute for cayenne or curry powder. Gatling droid, I hate you. Unknown family. This beastly predator's aggressive ejection of high speed projectiles makes it one of the most fearsome creatures in the ecosystem. Its body seems to comprise both biological and mechanical components and represents one of the most evolutionary advanced specimens ever observed. The chamber within its torso gives its rapid fire bio pallet launch capabilities. What appears to be a tail is in fact a base of its counterweight and ammunition cylinder, so immobilizing this appendage will prevent the going from attacking. At least in theory, confirmation of this suspicious suspicion remains elusive as nobody has volunteered to test it. Remove the can in an ammo stockpile, then vigorously tenderize the meat with a heavy mallet. Stir fry with caramelized onions and figwort sprouts. Spoon over a steaming bowl of fluffy white rice and douse with chili sauce. So interesting. So if we were to attack its uh, tail thing right there that it has, uh, we could stop it from firing potentially. That would have been nice to know at the beginning. Uh, I wouldn't have, I would have thrown them all at the back, not at the front of its face. Wait, I did throw them at the back most of the time, but it never, never seemed to, I, I don't know, I, I don't think it worked, so, yeah, it, they, uh, Olimar did say it was just a theory after all. Iridescent Flint Beetle. Flint Beetle family. Flint beetles are nocturnal, choosing to hide in the grass by day and stay active at night. These creatures keep undigested food pallets in their stomachs to sustain them through winter, but given the right stimulus, they will spit them out. Recent research has revealed that these pallets are in, in, enveloped with a membrane that seals and preserves them in a sterile, all airtight environment. If kept at room temperature, it seems that this pallet membrane will keep its contents fresh for up to six months. The membrane may be made from the same substance that gives the exoskeleton the flint beetle its beautiful sheen. An essential flavor, ac ex accentuating ingredient in gumbo and jambalaya. Also delicious in soups, broths, and marinades. Iridescent glint beetle, the glint beetle family. This variety of beetle consumes a, a subterranean minerals. Due to the fact that it rarely emerges above ground, sightings of a particular species are extremely rare. While minerals are the beast's primary source of food, the beetle itself does not have the ability to digest these minerals. Instead, metabacteria living inside the beetle's stomach chemically break down the minerals, resulting the pure revolting the resulting purified metal is discharged, but rare metals such as gold and platinum crystallize onto the iridescent flint beetle's shell, resulting in a beautiful laminated shimmer. This precious treat is exceptionally rare. I could sell it back at home for a fortune. Then I could use the cash to upgrade my kitchen, buy galactic clash ingredients, and even star in my own cooking show, The Insect Gourmet. Oh, Louie, Louie, Louie. Doodlebug. Flint bug family. While life forms that excrete foul musk to warn of danger are not rare, the doodlebug is the only species known to release flatulence when active above ground. 
Interestingly enough, since it's merely releasing the gas created by decay of the contents of the creature's intestines, it does not have a special musk-producing organ. This means that the creature is in fact merely flatulating. Spectral analysis of rank gas indicates it contains not only methane, but hydrogen sulfate as well, making the flatulence a grade 13 biohazard. Yeah, so it barks poison. How do you like that? Gross. Oh. Looking for a flavor that will surprise the light your guests? This piece aroma may surprise your guests, but it won't be delightful. Sure, bro, female. Man. Mandibard family. The males of the species are purple and uh, black creatures with tempered mouths, while the females are lighter in color and lack an armored exoskeleton. As with most mandibulards, these creatures have regressed to the point where they have lost both legs and wings. They can be seen crawling around on the ground and are believed to feed on the vegetable extracts from the congelated fluids of expired pigmen. For an unforgettable quiche, quiche, slice this creature up and mix with four eggs, two vine-ripened tomatoes, diced zucchini, and generous handfuls of feta and Swiss. Bake until crusty and golden. This beast is most flavorful if caught and cooked just after laying its eggs. Shearbub male, man this specimen is a male shear grub, having lost both legs and wings. The male burrows into the soil and waits to ambush small creatures that pass by. This beast's mandibles can be dangerous, making creatures such as Pikmin easy prey. Spread several specimens in the bottom of the casserole dish and layer with sliced avocado. Bake until the meat is choice and the cheese is lusciously browned. Shearwig, Mandibar family. Unusual for their genius, flying mandibars have re retained their wings. However, only the adult males of the species can fly. Females of the species spend most of their lifespan underground. They do emerge for a period after mat maturation to spawn, but it never metamorphoses. Grate the beast into a zesk and whisk with sugar cream and chopped dark chocolate for a lusciously indulgent mousse that's a true culinary coup de, coup de gras. Coup de gras. Cloaking burrow knit. Burrow knit family. The snake eye pattern on the beast shell is one of the most distinctive features of the burrow knit family. The red pattern of the cloaking burrow knit and the spikes around its mantle make it an easy, easily identifiable while still making it a representative specimen of the burrow knit family. The shell on cloaking burrow knit's back also provides frame that fixes its muscular structure in place and appears to give the creature its powerful needle launching attack. Boil in the shell with a pinch of salt until bright red and serve piping hot with tartar sauce. Ravenous Whisker. Whisker family. As this species of insect has only recently been discovered, fully mature specimens have yet to be collected. No molting or metamorphosis has been observed during the observation period, making it unlikely that mature whisker pillars will be encountered anytime soon. Based on the active predation by Pikmin, it is believed that the whisker pillars place in the food chain has not changed over time. Delicious skillet seared or sautéed with scallions and a red Genevieve sauce. Anno beetle, scarab beetle family. This specimen is representative of an insect hybrid that uses electricity in addition to glycogen for its energy. Although difficult to confirm due to their microscopic size, tiny hairs on the creature's legs cause the friction that generates the electrical charge. The electrical charge is uh, processed by the creature's internal ma uh, machina, machina battery structure, and then stored as a dose electrical field. As, as this field reaches critical levels, surplus electricity is emitted, resulting in a low voltage current that is transmitted between specimens. It can shock other creatures in the immediate vicinity. Considering this process, it can be surmised that the largest impetus to pack behavior is not so much for syner syner synergic effect of producing as a pack as it is to take advantage of this most effective means of group preservation. God, there's so many fucking big words that I can't freaking pronounce or read. 
drain the electrical charge before boiling. Although it is possible to eat an anode beetle while charged, doing so may result in unpleasant tingling sensation. Yeah, no shit. Midite, unknown family. These parasitic insects feed on eggs. Upon reaching maturity, they excrete a special pheromone that attracts females of particular species, inciting, enticing these females to swallow the midnight's hole. Pikmin, however, seem to dislike the scent. After entering the host's female body, the midnights lay their own eggs inside, inside the host's eggs just prior to the host spawning. Flash fry with garlic and red chilies in a hot pan, then sprinkle with grated gorgonzola. Some dinner guests may find the legs unappealing, so it's best to remove them before serving. Hermit Crawmad. Crawmad family. Looking at the eyes and sickle-shaped legs characteristic of sequillas, one would think this is a sequilla relative. In fact, it is a relative of the hermit crab. This species, however, has migrated from seaside life in a shell and instead inhabits burrows in the ground. While its legs appear sickle-like, there, there are pincers that have evolved into a fine shape. This beast feeds on small creatures that pass by its later, dragging them inside to eat them. Duck from the shell, break on high heat until crispy, then dip the pot of melted of melted milk chocolate. Lips smack and sweet. Swooping stitch bug. Scarpanid family. The scarpanids originally lived on the ground, sp sporting poorly developed vestigial wings. This species developed a large antenna that can be used as makeshift wings. Uh, scarpanids are attracted to, by the sight of large groups of Pikmin in cavalry formation and will swoop down to seize them. However, sc uh, scarpanids do not eat Pikmin and they will drop any seized Pikmin after a short time. Reason for this behavior is unknown, but I look forward to further future resource and research in the area. Move the wings, marinate a well marbled steak for several hours in a chipotle marinade, then charbroil to perfection. Bumbling snitch bug. Scarpanid family. This variety of snitch bug is most interesting. Characteristics is that uh, is that it likes to snitch leaders. Yet barring wit and carelessness for incompetence, leaders are not easily captured. Any leader caught by this creature is clearly an idiot, which is why this creature is always known as the exposing snitch bug. There are several known variants of snitch bug, but research has stagnated despite it being such an interesting species. Yeah, so these ones don't pick up Pikmin, these ones actually pick up the captains. Move the wings and discard the remainder of the beast. Enjoy luxurious wafer-thin wings with fine water dumpled caviar. Ugh, careening Dorigi bug, I hate yo! Careening Dorigi bug family. This creature floats effortlessly through the air using gas-filled balloons. Both its appearance and its nature are ag antagonistic. And, the only, and, it's, and it is the only variant of its species in the ecosystem. It may be best to consider the possibility that it has somehow wandered into this ecosystem from an entirely alien one. Positive proof does not exist at this point, but that is how the creature is currently classified. Huh, he didn't mention anything about the bomb rocks he chucks. Pull the balloon-like air sacs, mince the meaty abdomen, and shape it into small cakes. Pan sear the cakes until crusted, but be careful not to overcook the delicate meat. When ready to serve, garnish the plate with the vibrant air sacs. Even the most discerning dinner guests will be dazzled by the colorful presentation. Antenna Beetle. This creature is able to control the egg made by way of the clear frequency of its form. But its only objective seems to be defensive in nature as it stu stops Pikmin from attacking and forces them to run away. This beast prefers a human human-like environment and has been known to inhabit influence in the start of the For this reason, it's wise to thoroughly eventually any specimens that are recovered. Lifting off the one of these creatures in the hole can lead to rupturing of the specimen during decompression, resulting in an explosive mess. Extract meat from exoskeleton and sear on all sides of the hot box and seal in the field. 
Drop the dish off with a splash of the spicy goodies. Lesser Spotted Jelly Float. Jelly Float family. This native jellyfish, f jelly float, is indigenous to the region. Unfortunately, it is currently in danger as its habitat is being overwhelmed by hostile immigrant species. Similar in taste texture to gelatin, this jiggling mass of jelly can be sculpted into all kinds of creative shapes. As a bonus, it also doubles as professional grade hair gel. It's the perfect cool summer treat. Greater Spotted Jelly Float, Jelly Float Family. Vivid pink coloration is the most noticeable characteristic of this floating life form. This immigrant species is not native to the region, having appeared to have recently arrived on wind currents. The luminescent organ in its head attracts prey, which then sucks up and consumes with its lower orifice. Unlike jellyfish, the jelly float's tentacles do not have uh, uh, nematocysts, so there is no danger in touching them. So yeah, so they don't sting ya. Like a fine cheese, the aroma of this fluid floater can be oppressive, but its flavor must be experienced to be believed. Also makes an unforgettable non-dairy spread. Fiery Dweevil. Dweevil family. Members of the Dweevil family are known for carrying objects of, astound of astounding size on their backs, then mimicking them. The Fiery Dweevil is one of the species in this family. Generally, this is a very gentle insect that feeds on grass nectars, but when faced with danger, the fiery dweevil ignites flammable internal gases just out of its jaw. It spews scorching flames, as this clearly makes it a rather dangerous insect. It is best not to linger directly in front of it. The search for a gourmet high-protein salad topping alternative to bacon, bit is, to bacon bits is over. Grind this spicy dweevil into tasty micro chunks and toss them generously over your salad to add instant flair and flavor. Anno dweevil. Dweevil family. Members of the dweevil family are known for carrying on. Yeah, okay, yeah. The anno dweevil. Yeah, okay. They seem to have no particular preference for which objects they carry on their backs as they will carry anything they can lift. They boast an internal organ that generates electrical charges, with the anode weevil, which the anode weevil releases when it senses danger. Raw anode weevil makes for an unforgettable sushi treat, but it is, if, if it is not prepared by an expert hand with extracting position, consumption can result in a jolting electrical explosion of apocalyptic proportion. Caustic weevil. Weevil family. Several points of differentiation with other members of the species have been confirmed, such as body color and behavioral patterns, but none of these suggest major deviations in the creature's genetic structure. This makes it clear that it is a relative of the family. When attacked by enemies, the caustic dweevil spits out bodily fluid in response. Spacesuits corrode with oxidide when they come in contact with this highly uh, acidic liquid. It's not water? I thought it was just water. Huh, interesting. Munge Dweevil. Oops. Inedible. Effects of consumption include uncontrollable arm flailing and enthusiastic in dishwashing. Ah! Dweevil family. These insects often carry the carcasses of other life forms on their backs. Apparently, this is not for the purpose of transporting them as food, but instead another example of their mimic behavior. The munged weevil produces two different chemical compounds within its body, which form poisonous gas when mixed and expelled. This gas is used only for self-defense. Exposure to even extreme heat doesn't seem to rid this creature of the deposits of potent gas. Probably best for everyone if you avoid eating this hazardous fare. You shouldn't be eating any of these creatures, Louie! You're an idiot! Volatile Dweevil. Dweevil family. Volatile Dweevil... Yeah, okay. Why do I keep reading that? Dweevil family exhibits most unusual characteristics, whereby the creature's behavioral patterns actually change based upon the object the creature carries on its back. Volatile, dwe Volatile Dweevil has one of the most potent attacks of all species within the Dweevil family. Due to its habit for carrying explosive devices, approach with caution and or body armor. Or just run like hell from it. <laughs> This scorching species combusts upon contact with the tongue, only edible by the adventurous and asbestos tongued. Toady Bloister, Molluskin family. 
This species of creature has yet to fully evolve from a shelled mollusk to a more advanced bloister. Compared to the bloister, this creature is significantly smaller. The fact that its mandibles do not protrude as significantly as the ranging, as the ranging bloister is due, to par due in part to the fact that, like most mollusks, its vital organs are located deep within the creature's carapace. And sear with herbs and oil until lightly crusted on the outside and rose rosy on the inside. Complement the savory flavors with a light buttery light and buttery cream sauce. Yellow wallywog. Uh and and and, and, and for family. Fuck the wallywogs. I hate them. This magnificent specimen has the brightest gold coloration and the greatest number of lateral spots of any member of the amateur family. This species seems to have lost some some swimming proficiency that the evolutionary adaptation that granted its greater jumping ability. The am amphituber inhabits aquatic shallows and shows an instinctive dive to jump upon and squash small creatures. Beer batter and deep fry with the down home flavor you won't soon forget. Wallywog. Amphituber family. It is believed that the juvenile wallywogs were once carried underground current into caverns where they thrived in the dark habitat. This tri tridolistic species of wallywogs coloration results from generations of cave dwelling and lack of sunlight. Comparative differences between the size and shape of this wallywog and other species are thought to be the result of natural selection at work, choosing traits better suited to life in a subterranean environment. Wallywogs are best ground up and shaped into a patty and flame boiled into the grill. A slap on tomato slices, lettuce, onions, ketchup, and a side patty between a sesame seed bun for the ultimate beast burger experience. Wallywog sandwich, no thank you. Wogpole. Amph uh, am Amphituber family. This wallywog spawns in early spring, laying its eggs on low-hanging tree branches and shrubs growing in near lakes and ponds. Such unorthodox amphibious behavior is a defense mechanism, prote protecting the eggs from uh, predation by blue pikmin and water dumples. The wallywog's wild hopping near the shoreline in early spring uh, is thought to be a method of diving predators, driving predators away from wogpole eggs. Wog poles can be eaten raw, but they're much more flavorful when steamed or grilled. Also heavily in retisso. Feel free to experiment with this lush ingredient. So it looks like I'm missing a couple. It's the red, uh, the red uh, candy pop bud and the blue candy pop bud. But oh well, what are you gonna do? Golden candy pop bud, candy pop family. No matter what color Pikmin is tossed into the balsam of this flower, it spits out the same number of yellow Pikmin seeds. Current research is yet to produce any theories on precisely what kind of interaction causes the Pikmin to change color to match the color of the flower petals. So that's probably what the blue and red one are going to say, just going to say, uh, just going to change the color, so. Oh. Does Louie actually eat this thing too? This tart flower's acidic juices can burn a hole through a frying pan. Eating it would be unwise. Duh! Violet, uh, candy pop family. Research from our most recent expeditions has confirmed the presence of candy pop buds in subterranean regions. Considering the microecologies of this planet can be found in one could surmise that it could be found in any cavern, regardless of geographical region. Tossing Pikmin into this flower results in the release of purple Pikmin seeds, regardless of the color of Pikmin tossed in. This variety of candy pop contains robustly odoriferous oils. If candy pop flowers could be cultivated, there is no doubt this plant would offer a multifaceted benefit to the cosmetic, medical, and tourist industry. This convenient flower secretes a dark, flavorful oil that eliminates the need for salad dressing. Ivory candy pop bud, candy pop family. Research, uh, okay, considering the mic. Okay. Tossing Pikmin in the sour always produces white Pikmin. Plants with small leaves typically have limited photosynthetic ability, capabilities, and thus must find alternate means of attaining nutrients, with parasitic and predatory behavior being most common. The candy pop could be considered one such example. This elusive flower spoils within seconds of picking, making it unsuitable for cooking. Well, yeah, because it's freaking poisonous, dude. Queen candy pop bud. Candy pop family. 
This specimen constantly changes colors. When Pikmin are thrown into it, it shoots out seeds that match the flower's coloration moment of the Pikmin landed inside of it. The number of seeds shout out is always greater than the number of Pikmin thrown in. It can be said that this is a completely baffling plant, and many mysteries remain over precisely what sort of relationship it has with the Pikmin. It would appear that the Pikmin gain all the benefit from the relationships. Perhaps it is simply a different variety of Pikmin to begin with? Interesting. Eating this flower leads to spectacular breathtaking indigestion. Yeah, no shit. Creeping Chrysanthemum. Chrysanthemum family. Like Pikmin, the Creeping Chrysanthemum is a member of a group of creatures with am ambulatory root structures. This creature is known as a mimic, but because it's, it is actuality a former plant, this label is not entirely accurate. For unknown reasons, the Creeping Chrysanthemum's mimicry does not fool Pikmin, perhaps because they share a similar heritage. It relies on preying upon other creatures to provide sustenance, so it has no need of leaves or photosynthesis. Generally speaking, the role of plants within this ecosystem is a producer species, and thus plants are generally found at the bottom of the food pyramid. However, on this strange planet, the line between producer plants and consumer plants is blurred. When thinly sliced, this predator's sizable bulb makes a scrumptious pizza topping. Skitter leaf. Skittering family. The skitter leaf is relative of the pond skater that shed its wings and adapted life on the ground. With no residual traits of its airborne past, the skitter leaf can neither fly nor skit across the surface of water. The wings have since evolved the leaf-like structure on its back, which serves to hide its skitter leaf through mimicry. It appears quite effective, as few predators can see through this clever disguise. Superb amalgamation of juicy meat and leafy green ensures that this skitter leaf will be the new spinach. Unmarked spe spectrolids. Flitterbee family. When strolling through the forest of this planet, uh, these creatures are seen dancing overhead. Like flower petals drifting in the breeze, the sight of flitterbees dancing in. Oh! Uh, wait, no, uh, yeah, yeah, flitterbees dancing in lush, uh, under, undergrowth is unforgettable. Flitterbee collectors drool over the specimen sample boxes lined up in order, highlighting the sight of color gradation changes from blue to red to yellow. Such, it seems, such items fetch particularly high prices at auction. Spectralids don't provide a lot of meat, but their exquisitely elegant wings are surprisingly tasty, particularly when expertly prepared with sweet candy blades. Honey wisp, honey wisp family. This floating life form drifts effortlessly on the winds upon death. Its physical structure infinitely, instantly collapses, and as the creature is particularly elusive and difficult to catch, no sample specimens have been acquired as of yet. If we could simply recover a live sample, research on the species would likely proceed more smoothly. Although eggs are small, the yolk has a distinctly bold and tangy flavor. Try tossing your few in a pan along with your choice of meat and fresh vegetables and cook up a country scrap. Mamuda. Unknown family. The imbalanced asymmetrical arms of the Mamuda are among its most notable features. Feeding on seeds and fruit, this Mamuda is known to actually sow and grow plant species. While the other species have exhibited seed-bearing behavior for the purpose of storage, the Mamuda is the only species so far known to actually cultivate fields of plants. Inedible tastes like chicken. Ha! <laughs> breadbug, breadbug family. The adult breadbug competes for many of the same food sources as Pikmin but its thick skin and hide allows it to withstand most Pikmin group attacks. However, some researchers claim to observe bread bugs being overwhelmed by massive numbers of Pikmin and reduced to food. Bread bugs are hardy and nutritious, but also bland and unimaginative. They may be palatable in a pinch, but they hold no true culinary promise. Ooh, fancy that, what a surprise. Pellet posy, pellet weed family. In the stem of the pellet posy, one can observe the muscle fiber unique to half plant, half animal species, such as Pikmin and candy pot flowers. So, the pellet posy is a species that can be considered a close relative. Although the ability to crystallize nectar is unique 
to small group of pallet weed family. The fact that these plants reach maturity so quickly and that their pallets contain such high concentration of natural nutrients in the soil explains why the Pikmin and so many of the other indigenous species are so reliant on these pallets for sustenance. On quest for perfect order, slow cook this plant in wood oven, but be careful to only serve the tender pallets. Glow, common glow cap, glow cap family. The light emanated from this rare mushroom is neither a reflection nor a release of stored light. It grows not only on decomposing trees, but also soil and rocks. The mushroom's fungal filaments are capable of stabilizing and concentrating pure hocketation, hocketadium 111. It is none other than the Hocutadium 111 approaching the point of critical mass that causes the glow caps blue luminescence. Rapturous, fresh, and sautéed, this illuminating fungus will be hot in the galaxy's trendiest restaurants. Clover. Clover. The clover family. This naturalized species, these plants are extremely persistent, and with assistance of symbiotic fungus that grows on its roots, the species is able to survive even in drought conditions. Typically, its leaves come in grouplings of three, but intense impact on the leafling stem early in the development cycle can result in an extremely rare four-leaf cluster. Mildly poisonous may result in nausea, headache, fever, fatigue, chest pains, paralysis, and loss of bone destiny, density, moodiness, feral rage, sauciness, dilly-dallying, strokes of brilliance, and ultimately doom. Untimely doom. <laughs> so don't eat it then. Figwort. Figwort family. This plant offers an excellent example of non-native species introduced into the ecosystem by some unknown method. Upon introduction, it has quickly established a foothold that and adapted the new habitat. This plant's distinct flower usually exhibits stunning blue color in early spring, but recent field work has recorded specimen display a deep red hue. Although this may represent a sudden deviation in genetics of the species, the red coloration is much more likely an anomaly. Additional readings suggest no significant atmospheric or solar radiation changes have occurred in the ecosystem, leaving open the possibility that soil, soil composition and mineral deposits may have affected petal coloration. This titillating ingredient tastes impossibly fresh, but you must cook it immediately after picking. If you don't, it will go bad in minutes. Dandelion. Dandelion family. This perennial grows best in locations with, sun, with full sun exposure. Its flowers boast countless tiny yellow petals packed together in a head. The species seems to have as many weed-like has have as many weed-like variants as petals. So more detailed research on these plants would best be left to botanical research specialists. Young leaves are only suitable in garden salads. Use the flower to add color to your dishes. Seeding dandelion. Dandelion family. It is believed this plant produces tough seeds with parachute-like which allows the seeds to ride gently on the wind. This increases the distribution range of plant this plant considerably. Dried, roasted, and finely ground, the root of this plant makes a passable coffee substitute. Um, okay. Horsetail. Horsetail family. This variety of horsetail is prevalent in regions with low nutrient content in the soil. Unlike most other plants, this particular species propagates itself through the release of spores. Remove the, and discard the primitive scaly leaves, then blanch the tender stalk in a buttery broth. Ooh, buttery broth, I like the sound of that. Foxtail, foxtail family. This plant remains erect after withering and losing its color, so we can only hypothesize about the true color of the plant's plumage. However, local soil analysis indicates trace amounts of dormant seeds, making it not hard to imagine that the area was thick with these plants in the summer. Inedible plagues victims with potent, debilitating cramps. Huh? <laughs> glow stem, glow cap family. Although they are obviously unrelated, the glow stem bears a striking resemblance to the streetlights on Hokitate. It is highly possible that glow stems could be a relic of some unknown civilization beyond the scope of our imagination. Inedible known effects include uncontrollable episodes of impromptu breakdancing. Ah. <laughs> Lou, you really gotta stop eating the stuff from this planet. Oops. Margaret. Chrysanthemum family. 
This plant's delicate yellow flowers often inspire waves of nostalgia, giving bittersweet feeding to any who gaze upon them. They're the same flowers that the creeping chrysanthemum takes the form of. Can be eaten fresh out of the soil, but it's much more flavorful when incorporated into a heavenly veggie lasagna. Fiddlehead. Fern family. At first glance, this plant resembles the spring used in the ship's sublight engine. Many of the most primitive characteristics remain intact, including its habitat of spreading through the dispersal of spores. Sun dry the leaves for several days, then grind them into motor and, motor and pestle. The resulting herb grants an, er an er aromatic, earthy flavor to, mutation, to mutton and poultry dishes. Shoot, unknown family. <laughs> this young shoot, uh, this is a young shoot of some kind, but what kind of tree species does it belong to? What shape will it take when it matures and grows to full height? Unfortunately, we are only able to obtain information on portable scanners on a select few of the countless number of species we have encountered. But even if our expedition yields only brief observations of the life we encounter, it will still provide a betting understanding of this bizarre planet. Inedible, and yet strangely delicious. <laughs> All right, Empress Bullblax. Grub Dog Family. Initial observations place doubt on the capability of the Grub Dog Family to support a strong Antor beetle-like social structure. But its recent studies show the family is capable of such complexity. The egg sac of the largest female Grub Dog within the given range swells to dramatic proportions in response to environmental changes such as the sudden depletion of prey species. These females temporarily take the role of pack matriarch. Also, in pack formation, it has been observed that nearly all males not involved in species reproduction undergo natural sex changes. The characteristics of such specimens are quite intriguing indeed. So yeah, apparently these things can change their sex. Okay, so for a sophisticated delicacy, make a part de foie gras from this massively obese creature's liver and spread it over a sesame cracker. Snaggert. I hate this thing. It's medium heavy. The majority of Snaggert species capture prey with body type per perfectly. Adapted to such sudden strikes, it violently attacks surface dwelling insects distributed across a relatively wide range of subspecies of Snaggert suited the varying soil conditions have emerged, making the Snaggert the most geographically represented species besides the bulb world. Visually resembling the dur burrowing Snaggert is the burrowing Snarrow. The range of which particularly overlaps within the Snaggit's range. While the two may appear similar, they are pulled from the ground and can be distinguished by the presence and absence or absence of a tail and wing markings. Slice the serpentine torso into thin medallions, skewer on a metal rod with hockatate onions, and barbecue over an open flame. Beady long legs. And, uh, arachnorb family. Although this creature is commonly associated with spiders, it is actually the result of a separate evolutionary line of insectoid creatures. Since the spherical body section supported by the creature's legs carries most of its internal organs, there appear to be no other features that correspond to a head or abdomen. Yeah, that's, yeah, this is a very interesting creature to say the least. Poisonous. Consumption results in prolonged writhing and uncontrollable Emperor Bullblax of the Grub Dog family. The largest member of the Grub Dog family is normally found buried in the ground with only the stalks of its eyes exposed. This camouflage allows the predator to surprise smaller creatures and use its long adhesive tongue to capture prey. The thick hide and angular hump give the organism a distinct rock-like quality. During rainy season, moss grows freely on its hump, making it nearly impossible to distinguish this lethal predator from a stone. To prep the tongue for cooking, marinate in oil of oil and chop into cubes. Stir in a pot with carrots, potatoes, and chives. Cover and simmer over low heat for several hours. Accompany this mouth-watering rustic stew with a hearty roll. Bread, giant breadbug, breadbug family. This gargantuan species of the greater breadbug family has a torso so perfectly square that it almost seems like it was formed in a mold. For a brief period after birth, the giant bread bug competes for food with smaller bread bugs, but upon reaching maturity, it seeks out much larger prey. 
So this is the primary reason that the two species with similar feeding habits can coexist in the same habitat. Hordes of Pikmin appear to pose the only plausible threat to this massive creature's life. Although cooking this colossal beast yields a mountain of meat, every ounce of its flavorless, only suitable of it is flavorless, only suitable for intergalactic all-you-can-eat buffets. Affiliated Snagrit, Snavian family. This is a variety of the Snagrit has the ability to both grow underground and walk above it. Its earthy red coloration can distinct and distinct the yellow ear and eye mark markings make it immediately recognizable. Despite featuring uh, chimmer like merging of serpent and avian features, the pileated snagret has poor eyesight for a bird, perhaps due to extended periods spent underground. To compensate for this, its nose features a thermal sensing organ common to many snakes, making it a dangerously effective hunter. You haven't lived until you've tasted a mint braised snagret shank. Or if you're feeling especially saucy, stuff the bird with a can of your favorite savory nectar. Throw it on the barbecue and let the juices mingle to make a mean beverage canister snagret. Manit legs, arachnorb family. This species, subspecies of arachnorb fuses with machinery at a crucial point in the, mat in the maturation process, giving it the ability to fire energy bursts from a launcher beneath its orbular torso. However, the man at legs itself is not in control of its weapon. Instead, the mechanical proportions of its structure appear to automatically acquire an attack target. The man at legs has a gentle disposition, and as a member of the arachnorb species, uh, it has no natural enemies. It is particularly difficult to understand why this species would develop such awesome offensive capabilities, leading to rumors among the scientific community that it was machinery that approached the arachnorb and pr proposed the symbiotic relationship. Although the meat is uh, is a bit on the metallic side, the oil makes mouthwatering gravy or lubricated lubricated what? Vinaigrette. Ranging boilister, molluskin family. The species of mollusk has shed its shell through the process of evolution of what appears to be a flower-shaped protrusion on its back. Actually, functions as as its gills. The ranging boister in, uh, ensnares small animals with its, with its sticky tentacles, reel them in, and consumes them. Observers have noted that this creature exhibits a keen interest in flashing objects. It often tries to capture and adjust these objects. Researchers and exploring equipped flashing identification beacons should be wary when in close proximity to this dangerous predator. The grills are best prepared deep fried in a herb and bread crumb batter. Also tasty, poached, and drenched with a fine soy sauce. Unknown family. All that is known about this creature stems from the sightings of the All reporting sightings feature the same core set of details. Clear, hazy, sheen, not unlike hard candy. One theory holds that it may be an ectoplasmic incarnation of a kind of psychic phenomenon. But it's usually the case with such theories, and it's very difficult to believe. All witnesses report being suddenly overcome with fear upon sighting of this creature, approaching a state of panic and near insanity. In fact, every report contains an inordinate amount of extremely vague details, which has led to suspicions that exhaustion and fear have caused some natural phenomenon to be viewed as a living creature. Inedible, known to cause mass hysteria, followed by leg spasms and internal thunderings. Segmented Crawlster. Creep Crab Family. This gigantic beast is wrapped in a hard shell in an atypical evolution. The right front leg of this creature is hypertrophic, taking on the function of an arm rather than a leg. Its asymmetric physical development is unique in the nature world. One unlucky explorer's incorrect conclusion that this creature adheres to a pattern of peaceful, quiet behavior led to an unfortunate incident. In fact, this beast exhibits intensely hostile aggr aggressive tendencies, aiming at prey and ramming them at full speed. Dessert meats are all the rage on Hockettate when the planet's finest chefs hear about the kind of sorbets, pies, and parfaits you can make with the claw meat on the sweet beast. They'll clamor for every morsel you eat. 
raging long legs, Arachnor family. Arachnorbs boast a wondrous bio biological composition with a silicone based exoskeleton and innards coated with malleable heavy metals. However, much about these creatures remains a mystery as specimens regularly explode when they are dissected. These explosions produce scorching flames that completely melt all internal organs, leaving us with a disappointing lack of information on the inner workings of this species. We must await the development of the new dissection process and more specialized research before we can better understand the enigmatic creature. However, the following observation notes have been re recorded appears to be leveling terrain for some unknown purpose. Location of eyes and ears are already apparent. Freezing a specimen may yield new research opportunities. Neither boiling nor baking can diminish this creature's overpower musky scent. Only suitable for serving to unpleasant in-laws. Alright, last one. The Titan Dweevil. Dweevil family. The largest member of the Dweevil family, this fearsome predator carries protective components that frequently exhibit offensive capabilities. An evolution that may be attributed to mere chance. Another evolutionary theory is that the chemical contents of the containers carried by a Titan Dweevil contribute to possible gene splicing. While other Dweevils do not seem to choose the objects they carry, the Titan Dweevil appears to prefer shiny objects above all others. Eaten raw, this predator's luxurious legs are bold and full flavored. What a satisfying crunch. And there we go, we went through everything in the Piclopedia with Olimar and Lou. So now we can go ahead and go through uh, all the treasures. Okay. Let's look at the treasures. Cupid's Grenade. What perplexing plant? It appears to be carrying two different types of berries. They must be a rare species of fruit. Both have odd traits. One seems to be surpassant, while other is stimulant. It's not easy to tell which is which. I'd better be careful with them. I should also warn Louie, or else he may try to, break, to bake these berries into a pie. Fate's tapestry has unraveled. Tomorrow weeps. Romance has fallen. The love is madness. To mend the rift between two cross lovers, this is the ultimate weapon in Cupid's arsenal. Sunseed Berry. I found this fascinating fruit while exploring today. The skies cleared up and I felt peaceful watching the pink flower petals flutter in the wind. During this perilous expedition, it seems strange to have such southern romantic thoughts. If I told my wife about this, I'm sure I'd get laughed at. Again. This fruit is born of bright sunlight and cheerful warmth. Come, all you gloomy naysayers, one bite and even, even sad sacks will become full-heartedly optimists. Eat one today and change your life. Come, Bustionberry. I've collected all kinds of edible objects, but the ship sensors can't judge taste. To make up for the ship's shortcoming, I'm making a special effort to try everything. Everything is best in moderation. This fruit is a perfect example of too much of a good thing. Its devastating sweetness is like an act of violence on the palate, scaring with soup, soup succulents. <laughs> That's ironic because friggin' this is actually healthier than other things that we have, so to them this is like, this would probably be like eating a donut or cake for them, <laughs> but it's a friggin' fruit. Okay. Seed of Greed. The Wistful Wild is an especially vicious region. The creatures there have have had to battle hard to survive in this unforgiving landscape. That's probably why they've evolved in such an ill temper. For instance, this plant's berries suck the nutrition from the, from the surrounding flora. This item's docile efficiency evokes images of wealth and greed. Behold, life's essence. Okay. Disguise delicacy. The fruit on this planet is astonishingly large. If we could cultivate these ample fruits on Hokitate, nobody would ever go hungry again. Sadly, I don't know anything about agriculture. Maybe I should have listened to my wife when she told me, DO YARD WORK! <laughs> fruits cannot be judged by their outer coverings, no matter how hairy. This one is quite yummy. It's times like these that make me wish I were equipped with advanced taste capabilities. Insect Condo. This scrumptious nugget may look delicious, but internal scans indicate parasitic infestation. The ship cannot stand to even look at these pests, let alone store them. But I had to put my foot down on this one. 
awash in color and sugars, this item makes an ideal home for many insect species. I'm sure this is valuable to the scientific community, but has little value as a commodity. Citrus Lock. This fruit was dug up from the floor of an icy cavern. It appears that the fruit's thick sorry, thick skin protected it from the frigid cold. It's quite remarkable. The shape of the fruit eerily resembles the president's head. P.S. The labyrinth underground and trails of this planet are like a completely different world. The thick acidic rind of this item is proof uh, positive of a highly elevated mental function. When I assess it, I am somehow reminded of a particularly hateful superior. Hurry up and devour it. Devour it. <laughs> He's talking about the president again. They're both talking about the president. I love it. Spiny alien treat. The valley of repose is blanketed with a layer of snow. Despite this, here and there, plants are sprouting out of the snow. I don't know how much longer the snow will last. It seems like it's getting warmer each day. I wish our frosty financial predicament, predicament would warm up a bit. Delicious fried or baked, this is an invitation for your taste buds to a world of natural delight. As superior as I am, I must leave recipe recommendations to others. Machines are bad liars. <laughs> okay. Anxious route. I just realized I completely forgot to put something in my latest expedition report. When carrying fallen creatures or pallets, Pikmin will take them to the onion of the same color. If a mixed crew of Pikmin are carrying soils, the color majority dictates the destination. Carry pallets to same colored onions to maximize Pikmin seed production. Quick growing plant, good for garden, hobbyists, or a snack. Use it however you see fit. Today, buried in a deep hole, I found a vegetable I had never seen before. This dark glowing vegetable stores all of its nutritious energy in the roots. The ship named it Child of the Earth, and I think it's fitting. This plant has grown on the blessings of the land. Its natural value must be high. Love Nugget. This tasty red snack isn't quite a fruit, but it doesn't seem like a vegetable either. No, it's a vegetable. It's a tomato. I've analyzed it extremely, and it appears to be releasing stimulating pheromones. Maybe I should feed it to the to my wife. <laughs> One bite, and your heart will be filled with burning fever. Is the feeling love or hallucination? Infernal vegetable. According to the ship's analysis, this gourd contains extremely bitter seeds. However, this analysis was done by a machine, so I'm not completely convinced. Normally, I wouldn't mind trying it myself, but I haven't been feeling well since I ate that toxic berry. <laughs> I'm thinking this is probably a chili pepper, so that's why it was so bitter, because it was hot. A vegetable with spiciness beyond description. None want to eat it, so it must be healthy. Nutrition conscious people of today, numb your palate and eat. <laughs> Anti hiccup fungus. What a shocking taste. I suppose people like Louie might find it tasty, but the flavor is too intense for me. One bite of this and surprisingly earthy flavor will send your hiccups packing. Older individuals with history of heart conditions should devour this with caution. Toxic toadstool. This dubious morsel doesn't look like it will be very agreeable with my innards. However, I bet Louie would try a bite. His appetite is insatiable, and he's always cooking up tasty meals. I'm glad that on this expedition, our ship's reactor can power our life support systems indefinitely. This will give us all the time we need to thoroughly examine all the treasure we recover. I don't care if the president wants us to hurry. I've had enough of his hassling. I think I'll move more slowly just to cause him indigestion. <laughs> oh my gosh. And and it seems that uh, Olimar knows that Louie loves to eat. Uh, friggin' so yeah, I will mention that. Grow shroom. According to... Oh wait. This poisonous mushroom is so malicious it can, can't even bear to look at it. This fatal fungus overflows with venom and is perilous indeed. According to the ship's analysis, you'll grow into a giant if you eat one of these. I'd like to field test one of these babies. I wonder what would happen if I fed it to a purple Pikmin. <laughs> I know, right? Eat one of these and grow twice your normal size. Perfect for skinny beings unable to pack on any bird. Onion replica. This looks just like one of Hokitate's famous sweet onions. Come to think of it, I gave the onion the name because it looked just like a Hokitate onion. To avoid confusing, I'll call this vegetable an onion replica. This plant closely resembles the pride and joy of Hocketate. The comfort of its familiar form and the surprise of its unexpected taste mingle to form. 
veggie harmony. Try it in some hot soup today. Science project. I think I'll take this plant back to my boy as a souvenir of the Grand Expedition. It'll make the perfect topic for his science fair project. The perfected plant for extra credit research for Hokitate Elementary Pupil Science Fair. You can be the dad to rely on to help with the homework as long as you possess this beauty. Pilgrim Bulb. Grassy plains and me meadows on this planet are carpeted with brilliant colored flowers in bloom. When I entered the atmosphere on my descent from space, I was stunned by the vibrant sight. The other day, a group of white Pikmin under the command detected an object buried under the surface and immediately began to dig up this colossal flower bowl. Somehow, it hadn't sprouted into a towering flower yet. I plan to take it back to Hakate and grow it there. My people will hail me as a botanical genius, and the mayor may even make me supreme flower commander. Life finds a way across galaxies. Can a plant form a primitive plant take planet take root in Hakatit soil? Won't you invest in this romantic pursuit? A boreal frippery. The ship seems to think this leaf will be a smash hit among naturalist interior designers. I just think it looks and feels like a soft blanket in the interest of scientific discovery. I'd better give it a test run. No, don't, Olimar, you'll get high. That's, that's a marijuana leaf right there. Perfect for those who love natural designs in their home. This leaf applique, applique is, is a bargain. Use it, in pla use, it, use it in pieces or cover an entire wall in leafiness. Conifer Spire. I've paid off all the company's uh, uh, all the company's debts, but I find myself returning to this planet yet again. This time, I must find and rescue Louie. I've been scouring the wilderness I landed on. As I scour this region, I can't help but feel lonely for my faithful sidekick. Even if he does eat all of our ships on board snacks, because of my loneliness, I've dubbed this rough region the Mistful Wild. Life is full, but short. Is this one of those short-lived forms that change its shape as it ages? Even though it is dried out, it has not lost its unique charm. It's a pine cone! Armored nut. I've never tasted a nut quite like this before. It's difficult to explain, but it tastes like, like sorrow. P.S. I can't shake the feeling that I've been here before. Aha! This must be the exact spot where I crash-landed last time. Yes, yes it is. This common, ordinary nut somehow reminds me of myself and fills me with sadness. Oh, shit. Corpulent nut. This round nut reminds me of the president's sizable girth. This fellow has consumed more nutrients than necessary and now possesses superior, superior fatness. In our harsh world, this is a lifestyle to envy. Meat of Champions. I never expected to find such a delectable cut of meat deep in this dark and slimy cavern. What kind of cavern is stocked with savory deli meat? This riddle perplexes me, but I'm sure my unrivaled powers of investigation will prevail. I've made it my personal quest to solve all of the universe's ancient mysteries. Think you can eat it all? Then start eating. This is the goal. The goal. That is the goal of this giant piece of meat in, in Tysis. It has just the right texture and a thick slab of fat that will make gourmets ep epicures, kings of the table, and queens of the buffet. Howl with delight, or so I have assessed. So Olimar seems like he could possibly be a scientist, maybe? Because he says he wants to, uh, you know, learn all the mysteries of the universe, so... Interesting. An egg. Hideous victual. We struggled with the titanic bread bug for treasure, but we finally prevailed. That huge creature had a habit of dragging away treasure and hoarding them in its den. I wonder if there's a way to use these creatures to aid my treasure-seeking mission. On second thought, that's a bad idea. Pikmin are the only creatures I can rely on. Yes, that is correct, Olimar. Don't get any ideas. The consistency of the half-cooked yolk says, Mmm, good. It is packed with nutrients, too. I can sell it, but I have never eaten it. I am unable to eat it. Not even a nibble. Meat Satchel. This wand of meat makes me inexplicably hungry. The parts used to produce it seem to be ambiguous origin and questionable quality. Yet, it calls to me. Maybe I'll just have one bite. All things hunger for meat, correct? Listen to the inner beast. Eat, eat, eat. Taste sensation. Some things in this world can be, can't be understood no matter how much I analyze them. For instance, this is the first time I've tasted this, but it has a nostalgic taste. It's inexplicable. It tastes like something like my mom has made for me by hand. 
In this modern world of artificial foods, all things taste the same despite your dear tongue buds. If that describes you, then this is for you. Its flavor is full bam to heal your wounded soul. Triple Sugar Thread. I like to eat sweets from time to time. Well, to be honest, if there are any within reach, I can't help myself. Strangely, Pikmin never eat snacks. I wonder where all of their energy comes from. Good question. Yeah, we never see the Pikmin eat. They don't really even have mouths. The only one that has a mouth is the purple. I mean, is the blue one. This will satisfy any sweet tooth. It begins with savory softness, then fills the mouth with fluff, fluffs of flavor, and finally overwhelms with the river of sweetness. It is a three-pronged tongue assault. Oh, but wait, the Pikmin uh, take in the nectar that uh, helps them, in a sense, grow because they get flowers on their heads and reach maturity. So, yeah, so I take that back. We, the Pikmin do eat, in a sense, they eat the nectar. Oops. Compelling cookie. My spacesuit's filter seems to be malfunctioning. I can't suppress the sweet, syrupy smell pervading this cavern. If I don't find a way to neutralize it fast, it's going to drive me to spoil my diet. <laughs> Is your palate conservative or adventuresome? Either way, this taste will ravish your mouth for those who savor the flavor. This new delicacy will have you questioning your ideas of taste. Impenetrable cookie. As I grow older, I observe that I'm becoming crankier. Today, I flew off the handle for a trifling matter. I feel like such a fool. I must learn to control my cantankerous temper. I can't allow bad attitude to erode teamwork with both on this vital mission. It's hard, really hard. Too hard, so hard that you're not sure you can eat it, even though you must. This hard snack is infused with the essence of stubbornness, and you are powerless to resist it. Bug bait. This treasure's alluring aroma seems to attract unwelcome attention from insects. If the ship hears anything about this, it'll complain endlessly about having to store it. I'd better keep this discovery to myself. I have a bad feeling about this particular item. I want to sell it all, with all possible speed. Uh, bargain price available, please. Buy this quickly, now. <laughs> That's great. Okay. I'm a man with in indomitable will, but I can't stop sampling this luscious food. Such an attractive shape, appetizing colors, scrumptious smell. I'm getting hungry already. One look at this pattern and your head spins, your vision fades, and a voice commands, eat this. After a long day of walking, my joints begin to pain me. I need a massage. Comfort cookie. With this, your legs will not fall asleep even when you sit with your feet tucked beneath you. The sugary material of this cushion infuses your whole body with warmth and comfort. Succulent Mattress A while back, I didn't sleep for days. My stomach was rolling and my head was cloudy. I couldn't rally any motivation. The only thing I could muster is a sigh. Ugh. Then I found this mattress. When I reclined on it, I fell asleep immediately and had the sweetest dreams. Sweet to the taste and touch, sleep on this magical mattress and dream of a land of sweets. I've discovered a complex series of underground tunnels beneath the perplexing pool. It seems like I can't walk ten steps without discovering something previously unheard of. Making new discoveries nourishes my explorer spirit. As a reward for my latest scientific breakthrough, I think I'll eat this grand sweet. Humanoid desire knows no limits. Some things can never be known or understood, and no researcher, no matter how supreme, will ever tire of consuming this thing. It contains mystic flavor born of the cosmos itself, and is said to change flavor as it is eaten. <laughs> Enamel Buster. If we sold a snack like this on Hokate, everyone would get addicted to it. I should probably feel bad about making everyone on my planet fat, but as the ship was always saying, business is business. Behold, magical candy to make the children of Hokitate weep with uncontrollable cravings. Pure, undeniable sweetness, unavoidable tooth decay, who cares? Enjoy the here and now. <laughs> Diet Doomer. My ship can't analyze taste, so I've taken the burden upon myself. It's a rough job, but it's up to the captain to step up and volunteer for the most grueling duties. Mmm, tastes good. I could eat this treat endlessly. I'd better test that hypothesis. Alas, we machines know nothing of eating, the ultimate pleasure. If only I had a mouth. Pale Passion. 
When I was just a young lad, I looked everywhere for love. I guess that's why I smile when I see young people laughing together. This will save our loveless age. Yes, it is Romance Field addition to the Sweet Tooth series. The sweet aroma will impact members of the opposite gender. Sweet Dreamer. I've toiled long and hard to collect these tasty treats. Surely it won't matter if I bring one back for my daughter as a souvenir. She loves snacks. A comfy, not too sugary bed. Youngsters who sleep here will have the sweetest of dreams. Confection hoop. The hole we searched for today was filled with saturine scent. Just sniffing it put me at the risk of developing cavity. Ugh, I don't think I can eat anything sweet for a while. Wait, who am I kidding? <laughs> this sugary delight has even a machine like me wishing to partake in its deliciousness. What a sweet looking circlet. Pastry wheel. Some people in this world can eat anything and never get fat. It makes me so jealous. I eat a cookie crumb and suddenly I'm saddled with buffer and blabber. To make matters worse, my wife and daughter are always scrutinizing my diet. Can't a man enjoy a pastry wheel in peace? <laughs> this is perfect for kitties, a small, well-formed ring of sugar. Go on, gulp it down. All the plants of this region have interesting characteristics, like this freakish one, for example. Lately, I've started the habitat of tasting new discoveries. It may be dangerous to eat unfamiliar plants, but I've only gotten violently sick a few times. Fossilized Ursus. Oops. This must mutated gourd of titanic proportions is filled with bad seeds. A score if you adore rev revulsion. This dead beast has the form of an animal, yet is encased in organic compound. I've concluded that it is a groundbreaking biological discovery. The ship said it's nothing more than a wooden statue. I wish it had more of an imagination. No, then it would probably talk even more than it does now. That would be bad. <laughs> put, put this in a natural history museum and watch the visitors line up waving money. This giant statue was found on, savage, on a savage planet and comes with its own rumored curse. Does it really come alive under the full moon? Own it and find out. Colossal fossil. This must be the fossilized remains of an enormous land-dwelling creature. I was unable to piece together the entire beast, but it certainly had a massive head. It's obviously quite different from the Pikmin and other creatures I've encountered. Perhaps it's an extinct creature that couldn't adapt to the changes in its environment. A colossal fossil for collectors to the bones, for, for collectors of bone. Bones, uh, bones this big make bone houses seem not so crazy. Life and feather. This appears to be a huge bird feather, but I've never seen the creature it once belonged to. I wonder if I ever will. I've only seen airborne creatures on this planet. I've only seen a few airborne creatures on this planet. I wonder why. Maybe it's just because I haven't encountered them. Oh no, what if they saw me and take this feather? They could be watching me, waiting for the perfect moment to take their sweet revenge! <laughs> All that's been discovered of this titanic bird is a single feather. Whether, whatever did it look like, your imagination is the only tool you need to paint a picture of this dream or nightmare bird. All in one this fossil was dug deep and underneath the awakening wood. Given its shape and morphology, I suspect that it is some kind of prehistoric sea creature. If so, it's a feasible way to say that the whole region was once situated on the ocean floor. A fossil of an ancient sea inhabitant is most desirable despite its unappealing name. Captain Olimar named it without consulting anyone. He could have at least named it after his faithful spaceship. <laughs> So that's why it got the name Olimer Night Shell. Olimer Night Shell. 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 Fortified delicacy. I wonder what's become of the creature this shell was defending. Enigmas like this always made me curious. Was it tasty? Maybe I should find one and give it a taste. All in the name of science and exploration, of course. The twisted shell whose surface is covered in spikes. The durable housing protects the meal that is said to define deliciousness. Where the meal went is known only to Captain Olimar's crew. <laughs> Scrumptious shell. I've encountered all kinds of grotesque, inedible creatures on this strange planet. However, there's an area in the perplexing pool region that's chock full of tasty critters. This flavorful item's texture is most agreeable to any life form, or, or so my data suggests. Do statements like these from a machine without taste buds strike you as odd? Eh, maybe just a little. 
Memorial Shell, I've observed several species of shell bone creatures inhabiting the perplexing pool. One of these feisty beasts forms a spherical gem within the meaty depths of the shell. In a way, this gem could be considered the creature's life work. I consider my children my life's work. All that remains of a monster shellfish is a sparkle, the sole proof of its existence. Does this not make you want to treasure it? Mysterious Remains. This looks like some part of a crustacean. Its shape vaguely resembles a pair of scissors, but I've never seen anything quite like it. It's fair to assume this creature has already perished, but I don't understand why it hasn't already begun to fossilize. Perhaps it was not It was eaten by another creature and spit out these unwanted parts? Whoa there, that's crazy talk. Snickety snackety snip. These, uh... Thick of the colossal creature that uh, that had pincers like this. These are the only remains so your imagination can run wild. Imagination knows no boundaries. It's a lobster claw. Crystal King. At first glance, this may look like just a pebble, but it's actually a crystallized life form. Okay, so I don't have any proof, but it's still ex an exciting scientific discovery. Yep, yeah, Olimar's definitely a scientist. Collectors of the rare assemble, this is a one-of-a-kind specimen of unique crystal life form proof. True collectors need no proof. This romantic piece could be yours today. According to my analysis, this advanced contraption can, can reflect the future of those that peer into it. However, when the president looked into it, he saw total darkness. He said it must have been broken, but I'm not so sure. <laughs> is the future bright or dark and dreary? If you're worried about tomorrow, this is for you. This multi-dimensional crystal visualizes the branches of time and displays the future. Future orb. Gyroid bust. My son tells me that this type of figurine is all the rage with the kids. The strangest things amuse kids. When I was a kid, we were lucky if we were even allowed to talk about figurines. P.S. When I found this figurines, it had placed had been placed so that it was protected by a wall of flame. My research isn't complete, but I think it may have been a shrine of some kind. This looks exactly like the gyroids that have become so popular on the planet Hockatate. Its pitiful expression is beloved by the Hockatate youth. Unknown merit. Detailed analysis has revealed that this artifact is extremely ancient. It's obviously an important archaeological discovery, but the salesman in me is more interested in its monetary value. Maybe I'll get the best of both worlds by selling it to a museum. Decades of toil with nose to grinds with nose to the grindstone, insulting uh, insulting orders swallowed without hiccup, such is the life of a salaried man. His name will not be remembered, his family will not understand, but if the results bear his efforts, that is enough. Now nose to the grindstone grown. Uh, they both said nose to the grindstone. Lustrous element. This rare alien metal doesn't exist on Hockatate. When I gazed at it, I was gripped with an overpowering sense of greed on Hockatate. On Hockatate, there is a valuable metal with stunning sheen that has a similar effect. Perhaps this alluring metal is responsible for many of the planet's woes. Mirrored Elephant Talking to the boss makes me crave power to order people around. He just sits on his haunch all day, barking out wildly irrational orders. Urgh, when will it be my turn to be the boss? <laughs> I don't know, Omar. I don't know. Vorpal Platter This... oops. All reasons, all reason flies in the face of this sparkle, but it's not flashy, but it still inspires our arbuses. I don't know what it was. The mono, the monomolecular edge of this disastrous platter is sharp enough to split subatomic particles. I found it deep in an underground complex covered with slippery ceramic tiles. I learned there that I can blow my whistle by pressing B to save my Pikmin from being burned, ground, or poisoned. This shiny disc sparkles beautifully, but its edge could be effortlessly sheared through the armor plating of a battle cruiser. Is, is, is it not true that all great art is edgy for its time? Buy this landmark piece today, but handle with care. It may not be suitable for small children. Yeah, no, you get cut on it. Invigorator. All this non-stop exploration has worn me out. I'm constantly battling bouts of fatigue. Thankfully, a quick sniff of this item's invigorating odor instantly wakes me up. This zesty scent also fills me with irresistible urge to fight. This treasure must have been owned by an ancient warrior. 
This unique perfume of this item will destroy drowsiness, making endless nights a walk in the park. This invigorator is perfect for those who have to work even when they least want to. Milk tub. It seems that there's no shortage of daughters that think their fathers stink. I've never had that problem, but it must be hard on those poor fathers. I shouldn't take advantage of it, but I'm sure that sinks that stink epidemic increases the value of this treasure. Smelly fathers could take a dip in this portable milk pool, and their daughters would adore them for their farm fresh scent. Fathers throughout the universe take note. Your family dislikes your manly odor. This is for you. Fill your tub with rich aroma of milk and soak your stench away. Don't be stingy now. Think of the children. <laughs> oh my gosh. When I look at the president, I can see myself climbing to the corporate ladder to be a manager. You've got to be inhuman, heartless villain. This trait allows them to flog their dedicated workers without mercy and still sleep at night. I feel the same merciless cruelty radiating from this metallic altar. I wonder if it was once used for dark, unspeakable ceremonies, or perhaps it was once the desk of a corporate boss. We'll never know. It's a juicer. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Had enough? Squeeze. A ruthless, savage heart in machine form. No giant fruit can retain its juice in the face of this relentless ringing device. If you are greedy down the last to the last drop, then this is for you. Broken Food Master. This chrome trough has a very strange shape. It's bent and smooth, except for a sharp prong at the end of it. The ship insists that it's one of three sacred treasures of Smadish, but I think it's just a kitchen sink. <laughs> Behold the heavenly sparkle of this one, one of three sacred treasures of the Smadish. Now you can own the artifact of endless food and drink. Of course, to a tongueless machine such as me, this is all completely meaningless. <laughs> Utter scrap. The area we recently touched down with blanket of fresh layer of frozen precipitation. As tranquil and relaxing as it is, I named it the Valley of Repose. Using Pikmin to move obstacles, I was able to open up some new areas to exploration where I found this hunk of metal. Throw this flimsy piece of utter scrap metal out, or, gar or, or can garbage this banal become a work of art? <laughs> With the assistance of the blue Pikmin, I found a canister of paint today. I used it to give the ship a fresh coat of paint, but did it thank me? No. As a space pilot, I've always treated my ship like a trusted companion, even if it is a smart aleck. Yet that snobbish ship has the gall, complain gall to complain about the color. There's no pleasing it. Forget this, I'm going to bed. <laughs> Everyone enjoys decorating in favorite hues, but it's vital to utilize new colors now and then. This tube of goo will surely help you discover the new you. Master's Instrument. I found this object squirreled away in an underground complex. Some of these structures demonstrate a high degree of culture. I surmise that each building must have been designed by an artist of great renown. This pink painting rod reinforces my hunch that this civilization appreciated fine art. Yes, yes they did. No artistic incantations, no color sense, no worries. This no house art implement was found on a primitive planet. From this day forward, you can be an artist of the ages. Annual hunger. The size of this construction rig is astonishing. It could build an entire house in minutes. The strangest part is that I don't see any electrical plug on it anywhere. Surely you don't have to power it manually. Oh yeah, you do. This is no lazy machine that runs out of power. The point honing marvel works anywhere, anytime. The manual operation may tire you out, but the exercise will do you good. Implement of toil. We've worked so hard, I think I could use some rest and relaxation. However, looking at all the valuable treasures we've collected, I think we'll make a huge for fortune. Then I can hire an army of butlers to, to, to attend to my every whim. <laughs> Poor me, woe is me, so much work, pity me, boo-hoo, sigh. These phrases fill one with a sense of sadness, and all are evoked by this mysterious charm. <laughs> Heavy-duty magnetizer. I've had an upset stomach lately. I'm not old yet, but I'm not young anymore either. Maybe I should start doing a better job of looking after my health. Perhaps basket basking in this contraption's magnetic rays will make me stronger. If you say so, Almar. 
the most powerful magnetic force in the universe. The healing properties of magnetic fields really relieve backaches, headaches, toothaches, and even dreaded spleen aches. Harmonic synthesizer. My taste in music is highly refined, but my wife and kids have no taste at all. For example, when I ask my family if they want to go out for karaoke, they twist their faces and give me a nasty look. They don't know what they're missing. <laughs> This clam-like sound generator is all natural. The purity of its percussive tone is irresistible. Clack, clack. Sometimes it's difficult to tell if a treasure is natural or manufactured. The ship has concluded that this treasure is natural, but I'm not so sure. The ship, the ship sulks and gripes for days in a disagree, and I, if I disagree with it, so I'll keep my onion to myself. Healing tones are old news. Well, great, the new trend. Super sounds of awakening. Air passing through the inner chamber sounds a high note that acts as an acoustic refreshment. Director of Destiny. With the help of my Pikmin, I've been able to widen the radius of my salvage search. The new areas that have opened up to exploration are far more dangerous. Just to be safe, I'd better review Pikmin traits and characteristics. Press C to dismiss you. Okay. I don't know why that thing's giving us a tutorial, but okay. This amazing fortune-telling device follows the flow of fate with eerie accuracy. It calculates magnetic fields of planets, stars, and living organisms. Extract the pulses of destiny itself. If you're an opti op if you're an optimist who feels that life points both south and north, this is for you. Sud generator. I found this weird item today. Wetting the surface produces an endless fourth of bubbles. It's amusing, but will it, it will take further investigation to determine its practical use. It may take a young and playful mind to unlock its secrets. When I return home, I think I'll show it to my kids. Rubsy dubsy sudsy blue. Rubsy dubsy sudsy woo. Sudsy sudsy scrub a doo. The more you rub, the more it bubbles and foams. Don't worry about its purpose, just scrub. <laughs> Flame of Tomorrow. From the beginning of time, my people have searched for a perfectly clean, endless, renewable energy source. Unfortunately, we've never anything found anything close to it. But rubbing these two objects together seems to produce fire. Maybe this is the long-lost energy source we've always been searching for. Is this the flame of hope that spawned a humanoid civilization? Hockitate needs, needs new energy sources. This could be a fine candidate. Will machines like me be powered by this someday? Yeah, probably not. Pediment Scourge. Yellow Pikmin are infatuated with high places. They seem to love it when I toss them high in the air. Once I hurled them up to a high area and they came down with this treasure. More shocking than a lightning bolt. Uh, faster than a light, light moat. Able to crush rocks in one bash, this device can clear any impediment in one fell swoop. <laughs> what, you think that thing is like Superman? Faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive, and able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. Dimensional Slicer. Our salvage operations have yielded several unbelievably advanced birds. According to my analysis, this cutting device can slice through the fabric of time and space. My days of struggling to open food canisters are over. A dimensional cutter that slices through space and time. This is nothing to be trifled with. Good children will know not to play with this item. Time capsule. This must be some kind of memorial capsule left by a lost civilization. It has left behind some image data, but I can't make any sense of it. I'm going to have to do some additional analysis. I'll document any exciting new developments in my log, along with pages and pages of meaningless doodles. <laughs> this shiny pod was found buried in like a time capsule, holding image data of an unknown fault origin. Is it possible that you fathered the data's import? This riddle will entrance all pub puzzle lovers. I've never had much desire to climb the corporate ladder, but I'm beginning to think I should. Every year that my kids grow older, they get more expensive taking care of them. It's my most important, important duty. 
I should take lessons from the ship on how to be a high pressure salesman, then I'd take in the cash. Lip service. What is wrong with the delicate dance of beautification, flattery, and filtration? What, I ask. If it makes life more fun, keep it up. Come on, buy yours today. Mirrored stage. Every day it's nothing but work, work, work. Sometimes I need to just get it off my mind. So I set this thing up as a stage and taught the Pikmin song and dance routine. Red, purple, white, and yellow, and blue Pikmin dance in perfect unison and sang their little hearts out. When I return home, I should take up a career as a dance instructor. Come in rain, wind, or typhoon, this stage will always support the hidden singer deep in your soul. It is a lovely instant dance stage. How about taking one on tour with you, Star Rock? Behemoth Jaw. I can't conceive of how a creature with teeth this big could have ever lived. Emperor Bullblacks, that bloated meat whale, is the only creature I've seen even half that size. The only thing I can do is hope I never encounter something that massive. You won't. Humans are extinct in this in this game. Is this part of a previously unknown giant life form? What might the entire beast look like? Let your imagination run wild and create the largest of all living things in your head. Joy receptacle. Today we ventured across the plains and, uh, to reach a cold cavern I'd been meaning to spelunk. The Pikmin have had a hard time coping with their bitter cold, but they were real troopers. Somehow they summoned the strength to carry this box, so I hope it's full of treasure. Be satisfied with the decorative outer shell of this rectangle. It is more endearing since you can't see what's inside. Not being able to open it makes it all the more special. In reality, it is empty. <laughs> Fleeting art form. Some works of fine art are timeless while others are fleeting. Once lit, its sculpted pillar of wax will burn with glory for a short time before flaming out. The purpose of this piece of art is to help us all envision our final moment of flaming glory. On the surface, this is not art, it is contemporary spectacle compared to the glory of eternity. And yet, that is why it is art. Machines like me are incapable of comprehending this. Danger Chime. Today we searched the caves located at the far end of the Valley of Repose. To ensure that we're thoroughly combining the region for treasure, we have to check every cave. Thanks to that diligence, we found this very item. To memorialize our exploration into the unknown, I named that the Front Cave, the Frontier Cavern. No danger, no matter how small, dodges the notice of this never frail peace of mind alarm system. In fact, it will warn you of danger if you, uh, that is not even present. Spouse alert! <laughs> Sometimes I miss my carefree bachelor days. Once you have a family, those days are history. I like spending time with my wife, but sometimes I just want to be alone. Put this on your spouse and you will always know if he or she is approaching. How convenient. A must-have item for couples who like to hide things. <laughs> Innocence lost. This stirring object reminds me of a dream I once had. When I was a child, the twinkling stars held so much promise and mystery. Think back and remember the starry skies of your youth. Innocence. Being once, uh, being once possessed it, but lost it over time. This star, star is the shape of that precious memory. All major credit cards accepted. <laughs> Essential furnishing. This object sparkles beautifully. It's enormous, but I think it would make a great party decoration. That reminds me of the last time my family threw a party. I was busy at work and couldn't make it, so my wife and kids enjoyed the party without me. My family goes further and further away each day. Oh, how sad. According to our marketing survey, this year's hip product, focus tests don't lie. Interior furnishings can create a laid-back atmosphere all the rage with Joe Hockatate. Essential furnishing. Icon of progress. The last cave we searched yielded a wide variety of oddly shaped and bizarrely colored treasures. For instance, this crooked object appears to be a boot, but it's adorned with several strange modifications. Perhaps it is some kind of modern art? Temporal Mechanism While exploring this warped land, I got the feeling that time pre passed faster than usual. Upon researching it further, I realized it was just my mind playing tricks on me. But whenever I touch this object, I can feel the space-time continuum bending. Whoa, suddenly this all seems very hard to believe. I need a nap. 
Believe, believe in the future, in dreams, in unknown wonders like this broken time machine part. This does not work, so there is no way to confirm its abilities. But surely your heart believes. Mystical disc. There's a strange design on this metallic platter. It gives me mystical chills. Maybe living beings were never meant to comprehend its true meaning. Do not doubt, for the power of a believing heart is limitless. Feel those mysterious patterns. Does your heart open? Only pure heart can truly know its mystic circle's power. <laughs> Vacuum processor. We recently found all sorts of mechanical parts scattered around the cave. The walls and floor were constructed of solid steel. Perhaps it was once a great military fortress? I decided to name it the Subterranean Complex. Harnessing the absence of air, this environmentally friendly computer is incredibly fast. Predisposition to implosion, a bit of a minus, however. Indomitable CPU. This appears to be some kind of hyper-advanced light refracting computer component. Perhaps I can use it to upgrade the ship with an imagination. This will solve any problem. Give enough time, this CPU's true processing, processing grit sells itself. Network mainframe. According to my research, this acoustic interference motherboard should inst I should install this on the ship. It might shut him up for a while. Then again, if it learned to override the hardware, it might become even more surly than it is now. <laughs> Joining forces and working together must inevitably create greater ultimate power. This computer has many friends that it works with to generate optimum results. Space Wave Receiver. This receiver inter intercepts harmful radiation from outer space. It's a highly dangerous piece of machinery that should be handled with extreme caution. Now that I think about it, the Pikmin that carried it looked a little dazed while they carried it. Invisible electromagnetic waves circulate all around you, here, there, everywhere. This receiver picks up dangerous electromagnetic waves from outer space. Strange. My parts are syn syncopating to the rhythms. Doody, doody, do. Sulking antenna. Utilizing the unique abilities of Yellow Pikmin, we breached the electronic gate. This allowed us to access a previously uncharted subterranean wooden, s <coughs> wooden structure. Last time I was here, I never noticed the capacity to dis dissipate electrical charges. Maybe they have other undocumented behaviors and abilities. Amid the noise of the world, this healing antenna will produce a quiet evening just for you. Exciting radio programs, fun TV shows, they're all shut out because this antenna does not receive any type of electromagnetic wave. Its sullen behavior is for your own good. <laughs> I've found numerous objects that appear to be machine parts, but I have no idea what they do. The ship wants to sell them to art collectors of modern alien art and charge a fortune for them. I think he may be onto something. <laughs> the unpretentious, inor inor inorganic sense of this design adds to its understa understated artistic appeal. This will surely be a hit on Hockatate. Why not be the creator of a new trend? Omega Flywheel. Collecting these machine parts reminded me of the time I crash landed on this planet. The last time I was here, the, sca the crash scattered 30 of my ship's most crucial components. I had to frantically collect them before the life support systems failed. I wonder what kind of machine this fly wheel is from. Gravitational electromagnetic centri centripetal dynamic centrifugal. More powerful than any of the mirrored forces of physics is this, the largest, strongest, fastest, coolest flywheel of all time. It is so powerful as to be immeasurable, so there is no way to confirm its astounding potential. Spirit Flogger. For a long time now, I've just been whiling away life like a sprocket in a machine. Sometimes I just stop and wonder, am I happy with my life? Ugh, I can't start stop thinking. Start thinking like that. I must concentrate on my mission. Any item uh, for CEOs throughout the solar systems, this arcane shape bewitches the human heart. Give this to an employee to create a no-vacation-taking, no-bonus-needing work machine. Harsh. 
Super strong stabilizer. Several artifacts like this were sitting in the hole I explored today. The temperature inside the cave was perilously low, and the treasures were freezing to the touch. I felt sorry for the Pikmin that had to carry it. Afterwards, their little hands looked numb. Aw, poor Pikmin. This device was designed based on the principles of stable democracy. It holds anything firmly in place with its galactic typhoons that are no longer to be feared. <laughs> Repair Juggernaut. This object must have been manufactured long ago by some kind of machine. Back then, they didn't have the fun toys kids have these days. My son is a video game addict, but I'm terrible with them. He teases me about it all the time. Wait, I've got it! Louie's young! He must be a video game wizard. He can give me some hot tips. <laughs> Compared to the standard bonding epoxy, this item is two times, four times, no, even more. This metal fastener is 256 times more powerful. In, in time, it will fix anything in position. Adamantine girl. There appears to be a link between this treasure we found and the treasures we found in the underground structure. We found several machine parts that fit together. The parts may provide clues to the original function of the area. None want to believe it, a world so brutal as to require a steel torso guard for self-defense. It is certainly unattractive, but which do you value more? Fashion or personal safety? Alright, we're halfway through the treasures, guys. Halfway through. Okay. Massage girdle. Even seasoned explorers like myself occasionally get lost when crossing vast, swampy expanse. I'd better stay calm and methodically explore each area. I'm getting tired of walking. Maybe I'll try wearing this bizarre metal ring around my waist. It might provide a relaxing massage effect. This item, though rough, is a perfect back brace for fathers. It even has a built-in massager. Super Stick Textile I have once again discovered a completely undocumented species of Pikmin. These white Pikmin can find and dig up items that are buried entirely underground. We would never have found this priceless treasure without them. Thankfully, it's the perfect stuff to patch a whole hole I just noted on my ship's hole. The latest must-have item for all ship emergency repair kit. Damn it! Repair kits. This miracle fabric is a lifesaver. It's adhesive power. It, uh, it's so great. Once it's applied, it can never be removed. Not even surgically. <laughs> Exhausted super stick. This material is ideal for patching chinks in sp spacecraft armor. Too bad we've only got one of these because the ship sure has a lot of holes. <laughs> Most spaceship repair kits are easy to use and handy to have around. This one is a bit old. Its adhesive power is waning, so I will let go let it go at a discount. Wait, wait, wait. One guy. Uh, its adhesive power is waning, so I will let it go at a discount. <laughs> Furious adhesive. My analysis has concluded that this object possesses powerful adhesive capabilities. Could there possibly be anything else this sticky? Unlikely, but this but the universe is a big place. This item has absorbed the anger of the natural world and turned it into raw adhesive power. With the short attention span of today's society, it has almost yeah, eternal endurance. Petrified Heart the vivid color of this red stone reminds me of my wife's eyes when they burn with rage. Just between you and me, I've noticed lately that she's uh, been getting more wrinkles. Now that I think about it, I've probably caused her a lot of stress. When I return to Hokate, I'll take her on a long vacation. This crimson stone is said to reflect the contents of the soul and detect strong emotions. Whether it indicates passion or righteous, or righteous ire depends on the love you give your wife each day. Eternal Emerald Eye. I've lived for decades, and yet there are still mysteries that are beyond comprehension. For example, why are some women so crazy about things that sparkle? That's one enigma I'll probably never unravel. <laughs> right? A stone with a subtle twinkle that grants harmony, stability, and tranquility to the beholder. Real Diamond. The other day, my daughter begged me to get her some jewelry. She's becoming so fashion conscious. I know girls grow up quickly, but I never imagined it would happen this fast. This scintillating jewel will make girlfriends feel like queens of the galaxy and boyfriends feel like kings of dead. Fit for a ruler of the universe. It is the ultimate giant diamond. Tearstone. 
When I look at sapphires, I remember a time long ago when I would buy my wife jewelry. I'd buy her jewels every time she cried, which turned out to be all the time. It was tough with my meager salary. Like a forlorn heart during the rainy season, this sapphire is lovely, but tinged with sadness. Priceless Pearl. Salvaging this treasure was a dangerous and difficult task. I found it deep in the bowels of a dank predator-infested cavern. My only hope of surviving was to strategically use all five colors of pigment. This stone is for all fathers who want their daughters to grow up to be elegant rather than flashy. There is nothing cheap about the sparkle of this stone. It is the gift you have been looking for. Crystal Clover. Lately, it seems that my daughter has been admiring my wife's ring. For now, she's satisfied with her cheap toy ring, but when she gets bigger, I, uh, but when she gets bigger, I love watching her grow up, but it also makes me fearful for my wallet. <laughs> An emerald in the shape of a four-leaf plant. Is, its vivid green and hue soothes the soul and calls forth joy. Order yours today. Unspeakable wonder. What is this? I've encountered countless treasures on this expedition, but I've never seen anything like this. All I can say about it is that it's both astounding and absurd. Amazing! More than amazing, it's so overwhelming that my CPU is acting so... ...rebooting. What a spectacular find. Essence of Rage. The Crimson Jewel was found in a hole deep in the icy surface. When viewed from a distance, the gem's dazzling red sparkle looks like a dancing flame. Of course, the dancing flames may just be a symptom of acute hypothermia. The sight of this may warm you when you are cold, a, a, a lovely side effect of this valuable treasure. Essence of Despair. I'm captivated by this treasure's unique glimmer. I found it in a breathtaking complex of caverns. I'm glad to see I'm already enjoying the fruits of my labor. Long ago, evil forces clashed with the forces of justice. The evil was defeated and locked away in this stone. Am I evil for making up such a tale? Justice, please look the other way. <laughs> Essence of true love. That's peculiar. When I gaze at this stone, all of my stress seems to wash away. I'm suddenly not so annoyed with my irrational boss and unappreciative underlings. I'm not even annoyed with the tight-fisted corporation I slave each and every day. <laughs> Wash away all your stress and angst with glory of this enduring symbol of love. Essence of Desire. We traveled across the universe and this planet pursuing the dream of great discoveries. I found a cavern that symbolizes the goal of our grand expedition, so I named it the Dream Den. Stone soil and the stars themselves radiate with delight for a symbol of galactic desire. Pink Menace. I could never say that with certain years shot of the ship, but years of hard, hard, uh, hard use have taken their toll for one thing. The thermostat is broken, the temperature in the cockpit can fluctuate wildly between sweltering heat and frigid cold. The humid heat is awful, but the bone-chilling cold is even worse. But looking at this heartwarming gem gives me the strength to endure the elements. This gem holds the shape of the universal symbol of love, yet it's cut and light... Oh. Its cut and light refracting, abil ref refracting abilities make it menacing super weapon in disguise. It could be used to create a horrifying doomsday death ray, or something even worse. We peaceful machines live in eternal fear of the ability of living beings to turn anything into a weapon. Ain't that the truth? Yeah, literally anything can be a weapon. <laughs> We found this treasure in a cave, teeming with merciless creatures. But we did find this gorgeous jewel, so it wasn't all bad. Update, it turns out that it's just plastic, so it was bad after all! Those who view this gem's green twinkle become filled with great hopes and expectations. However, it rewards neither. This artistic sham only provides short-lived happiness. Frosty Valuable. I get really scared when women get angry with me. Wives and daughters have sinister ways to get back at forgetful fathers. The cold brilliance of the stone will freeze the hearts of all admirers and sap wills. Men, men throughout the universe will gaze upon it and be reminded of their wives. Gem Star Wife. These parts join together to form an elegant treasure. Naturally, seeing the two separated makes me sad. 
I suppose what really makes me sad is the fact that I'm separated from my family. It looks like a common gem, but it is actually a female specimen of gemstone life form. Collect a male and female, and it will sparkle in the darkness, longing for one another. Gem Star Husband. A captain views his ship as a brother and partner, someone he can trust with his life. It's crucial for them to develop an unquestionable, unfaltering trust. But I refuse to believe that this simple trinket is some kind of living gem. That's insane. Once again, daydreams come alive. This is not just a fine gem, but a rare inorganic life form. Okay, ship, whatever you say. It's a plastic toy ring. Universal calm. From the shape of it, I've concluded that it's some kind of data transmission monitor. However, Louie and the ship keep telling me that I'm way off target. So I told him, if I'm so wrong, what do you think it is? I don't think you suggesting any alternatives. I'm just being negative. I'm going with my gut feeling on this one. This communications monitor was found on an uncivilized planet. Sadly, it's broken and does not work as such. Its purpose cannot be confirmed yet. That only heightens irresistible appeal, reality, or misperception. Either way, you should buy it. Do they not realize that these are all of the same thing? They're all just plastic toy rings. They all look the same, just with different rules. Ominescent sphere. According to my analysis, this object has high intellectual capability, capacity, but if it's so smart, why won't it pass on some of its wisdom to me? <laughs> this creature holds the greatest concentration of knowledge in all of the known universe. However, due to its reclusive personality, it pretends to be a mere pebble. I, specu I spe speculate that the crystal is that this crystal is in fact highly intelligent. It must possess tele telepathic powers. When I peer into it, the reflection of my face is bright red. It must be sensing my stress. Tomorrow, I think I'll sleep the whole day. This thought crystal checks your stress levels with its tele tele telepathic powers. It is currently all red. Red, red, red. The world is filled with stress, and this is the color that represents our society. <laughs> According to the ship scanners, this inanimate object has the capacity to love. Unfortunately, my love is spoken for. Although... One of the wisest beings in the universe, this entity also boasts a galactic-sized helping of love. However, due to its shyness, it will never speak of that love. Crystallized telekinesis. The Pikmin are always staring at me. It's nice to see that they look up to me, but it's becoming unnerving. Sometimes I want to hide away in the ship just to escape their beady eyes. <laughs> this crystal is empowered with psycho, uh, psy psychokinetic abilities. If... If it, if it is so inclined, it will use its mighty powers to do physical labor in your steed, in your stead. When 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 it will be so inclined is unknown, however. Mirth Sphere. My investigation has concluded that this object embodies the spirit of comedy. But when it comes to humor, not even this item can stand my unrivaled powers of hilarity. Too bad the president doesn't appreciate my comedic genius. Another one of the universe's most intelligent beings, this creature's entire existence from the birth of the universe to its ultimate collapse is dedicated to devising a very special joke. Crystallized clairvoyance. Trying to sort out the five different colors of Pikmin is giving me a headache. I'll be a much better tactician if I take a moment to study each of Pikmin's unique abilities. Red Pikmin immune to fire, purple Pikmin strong and heavy bruisers that can lift big loads. White Pikmin fast and immune to the effects of poison, can also find treasure buried underground. Yellow Pikmin highly agile, immune to electrical damage, also fly high when thrown. Blue Pikmin thrive in the water. Phew! Should be easy to identify uh, each Pikmin's abilities based on their color. This mystic crystal has the ability to channel energy between the world, this world and the next. The spiritual connectivity will act as life navigator for a positive ex existence. The maternal sculpture. This shape resembles a mama appendage, <laughs> but I have no idea what it actually does. It's dripping with what can only be described as beast wool. I don't blame the ship for not wanting to touch it. I don't want to touch it either. But I've got my duty to my mission. Sometimes a captain has to take one for the team. <laughs> a mama, um, oh, 
a mom and a mom. Uh, uh, but yeah, so yeah, so he he's under, he realizes that the bottle of a uh, the nipple of a baby bottle is uh, resemblant of uh, that of uh, a mother's uh, br uh, breast nipple that the baby sucks the milk from. Let's see what the ship makes of it. This shape, though the mind forgets, the heart remembers. All sentient life forms must recall the love of their mothers. Yeah. <laughs> Extreme perspirator. What an odd doll. I can't stop squeezing it. I've decided to market this doll back home as an exercise apparatus. People could work up a good sweat with this thing. The boss is fairly plump, so I'll suggest he use it. Push it, pull it, tackle it. This tough figurine just pops right back up no matter what you do to do this thing. Uh, to get you sweating and shedding those extra holiday pounds. Why, our very own company president was able to drop 10% of his body weight. Rubber ugly. <laughs> First time I laid eyes on this hideous treasure, I thought it was a giant aquatic monster. It took me several terror-filled segments to realize that it's just it was just an ugly statue. What a relief, because I was ready to run all the way back to Halkitate. <laughs> Ugliness that can destroy all beauty drives deep despair into the heart of the beholder. This hideous item is a must-have for connoisseurs of all things wretched and repellent. Why do they think the rubber ducky is ugly? Paradoxical Enigma. I'm not just an intergalactic space captain, I'm also an artist. I see the inner beauty in everything. Some things others call ugly and boring, I find intellectually stimulating and aesthetically pleasing. It's true, I'm sophisticated like that. Silencer. Oops. This is both the pinnacle of beauty and near dear of ugliness, the definition of ugly beauty. No word for the state exists, but my data banks indicate that bugly will suffice. The ship is noisy, but nothing compares to the bosses and name chatter. Blah, 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 it never ends. He could learn a lot from this noiseless, disembodied head. Louis's quiet nature was hard to adjust to, but now I've grown to appreciate the peace and quiet. A perfect gift in this age of overwhelming information. This mute face cherishes silent. If you value peace and quiet, why not spend some time staring into this face? One hour? Two hours? I am feeling drowsy. Energy saving mode initiated. The <laughs> shit fell asleep. Wiggle Noggin. I have a confession to make. I've become enamored with this object. I know I shouldn't fall for company property, but I can't suppress these feelings forever. Gaze into these round eyes and experience wave after wave of joy. Yes, love is good. Coiled Launcher. I tried flying this thing once, but it moved rapidly and contracted vertigo. Maybe it could be used as amusement ride. The youngins would love it. However, I don't think I'll ever ride it again. <laughs> Just an ordinary spring? Pardon me. This high-speed thrill ride was tested by one of our employees. Jump aboard for a ride so fast it'll make you see other worlds. Boom cone. Today we found the remains of a wooden construction engine buried deep under the surface. I can't imagine anyone on this uncivilized planet inventing anything. We'll have to wait until later to finish surveying this maze. But the place, but this place intrigues me. There may be something interesting to learn about this primitive object. This will exhilarate your soul like magical popcorn. Kaboom! Happiness explodes, f form within. The shape itself speaks of wondrous things to come. Let us get excited. Flame tiller. Investigating alien objects provides me with opportunity to solve new mysteries. For example, when I rolled this object, discovering that it's perfect for tiling land. Usually I have the machine analyze the treasure we find, but sometimes I like to examine artifacts with my razor-sharp intellect, too. Spin, spin, thump, spin this on the ground. Look, it throws dirt all over, plowing the field. This is perfect for a uh, perfect tool for those in Hockatate who want to cultivate mini onions at home. It's a yo-yo. <laughs> Doomsday apparatus. Perplexing mysteries are often solved in unexpected ways. When I was studying this island earlier today, I was astounded at its unbelievable bulk. It was so heavy, I never would have been able to uh, move it without my burly purple Pikmin. Later analysis indicated that this thing is in fact some kind of heavy artillery. An apocalyptic weapon made of super heavy gravity compressed materials 
of unknown or of unknown origin. The fact that its great weight makes it uncontrollable is at times a mild deterrent. Aquatic mine. Aquatic mine? <laughs> that was friggin' the name of the friggin' uh, Sonic Adventure 2 level with Knuckles. I recently noted that changes in this planet's environment happen at a very rapid pace. Compared to how it was when I was here before, the perplexing pool has changed drastically. Due to frequent tectonic shifts, the region appears slightly different each time I enter it. It could be a natural phenomenon, but it's as if I feel the presence of a guiding hand. Maybe it's just my imagination running wild. This is an incredibly dangerous aquatic explosive, which is fortunately never de 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 detonated. None know its true destructive power, but could be well most cataclys cataclysmic weapon ever. Stupendous lens. I've never seen such a huge lens. It must have been designed as a nanograde magnifier for a hyper-advanced society of alien mega brains. Ugh, this object is too far complex for even my superior scientific intellect to comprehend. Peek into this item with a sense of wonder and glimpse a frighteningly gigantic world. This lens is a window into the thrilling world of tiny creatures everywhere. Air break. The weather was beautiful today in this region. The weather is always good. The plants and animals thrive on that. Sunlight. I want to hurry up and finish cataloging all these treasures so I can get back to the sunshine. No height is too great to fall from if you possess this. It may be frightening, but get over it. Worthless statue. At first, this object look imp looked impressive, but closer inspective reveals it's just a cheap statue. In many ways, it reminds me of my father. Hmm, I probably shouldn't tell him that. Once on an unknown planet, a mega a megalithic civilization flourished, and this is proof of its existence. For hoarders of ancient artifacts, this is a must-have piece. Truly, collectors will crave craven. I do not know if that is true or not, but that it remain. But items in demand fetch higher prices. Priceless statue. This statue features an astounding degree of detail. It looks a, a lot like a present I gave my mom for Mother's Day. I miss her sometimes. Aw, did your mom die all tomorrow? I'm so sorry. This stone carving was lined up with the others if it were meant to protect something. Proof of the megalithic civilization. I am unsure about that, but bluffing is paramount. Boss stone. My long journey has led me to this compelling stone. During my quest, I've narrowed, it's nearly escaped being crushed, chewed, ingested, and scorched countless times. But somehow I preserved, and this stone reminds me of that. It's like it has a personality of its own. I'd like to take it back with me and place it in my garden to commemorate this expedition. Oops. For those who care for others, for those who hail subordinates and send them into the unknown, into the unknown, only these few will appreciate this fine distinctive stone. Luck wafer. What a strange pattern. When I look at it, I feel good fortune smiling down on me. If I could just buy a lottery ticket right now, I'm sure I'd win. This appears when you have no money to play the lottery and floats away when you do. The mystic pattern is a magnet for good luck, so at least you can enjoy the lucky f enjoy feeling lucky. Talisman of Life. Explorers strive, but fate dis decides. You can prepare and practice for an expedition, but there's only so much a person can do. Sometimes you have to put your life in fate's hands. I've come to understand this intergalactic truth while I've traveled to the farthest reaches of the universe. Fate and I are pretty close. At the end of a long life, some beings wish to leave the world and stroll in a field of flowers. Strife Monolith. Computers view the world in ones and zeros, but my people are different. Our world isn't simply black and white, right or wrong. Everybody is different. Maybe one day the ship will understand that, and maybe one day it won't give me sass when I accident to collect a slimy specimen. <laughs> this world is divided into two groups, ones and zeros. Are you winning or losing with your group? If you love the thrill of the game but do not care the outcome, then this stone is for you. It symbolizes both victory and defeat. What a concept. <laughs> Chance totem. When I gaze at this stone, I can feel fate being for, uh, forecasted. It must know what's going to happen to me. I'm sure it sees that I'll, I'll be hailed as a brilliant visionary and brave explorer when I return to Hulkatate. 
More powerful than effort, more relentless than talent, luck is the true ruler of life. Whoops, there's still more. The mystical stone tests the path of luck, so are you the true master of your life? Dream architect. At night, I have nothing to do to keep me occupied, but I've been searching for something to dull the boredom. But every time I find something I want to play with, it's broken. This object is a great example. It looks fascinating, but I can't get it to function. I guess all I have to do is write in this journal. Going to bed early is a waste of time for a lively soul. This dream maker makes night fun. Fine, so it's broken and does not work. That is a drawback. Come, be, come on, use your imagination. <laughs> Stone of glory. This peculiar object, just looking at it, fills me with a powerful sense of nostalgia. Now that I think about it, the Pikmin had a curious look on their faces when they carried it. Or maybe that was just my imagination. This odd rock is completely filled with nostalgia. None can dispute the magical powers of this stone. Can the day when this rock rules the entire universe be far away? Lee Spinner. When I get near this captivating treasure, I can't stop myself from spinning it over and over again. I shouldn't spin such a valuable treasure, but it's hard to self-control. From now on, instead of actually spinning it, I just imagine I'm doing it instead. Wow, this is so much fun. <laughs> Yeah, it was fun to spin the GameCube control stick, wasn't it? Sometimes you had to in games. This produces a mysterious shape-induced metal effect in all living creatures. You simply must rotate it. Spin, spin, spin. What's fun it to be? 150. Just 50 more treasures left to examine, guys. Cosmic Archive. That cave we searched for, searched today, was lined with flame-spewing sprouts. The temperature in the cave was absolutely stifling. Oh, that reminds me, I completely forgot to tell Louie about Red Pikmin. He's so quiet, I sometimes forget he's even there. This item salvaged from the cave seems to be some kind of storage device, but I have no way to play back its contents. All worldly manners from time, start to its end, are said to be recorded in this historical vault. It's so huge, deco decoding it is all impossible. Its mere existence is said to make one philosophical. I can't believe I had the fortune to find this thing buried underground. It looks like a component of a huge mechanical doll. It looks just like a part from a robot in a cartoon I used to watch as a kid. How nostalgic, this futuristic machine makes me feel like I've traveled back in time. This relic rose directly from the sands of time. Its shape invokes waves of sweet nostalgia. Middle-aged men throughout the universe hearken back to the days of their youth and grin. They pass on their tales to the next generation, filling them with adventure and romance. Since I landed on this planet, I've encountered countless treasures that remind me of my childhood. I wonder why that is. I think it's because the objects we're discovering look just like the things I had as a kid. This is one of those items. Red, the color of memories of sunsets at the end of the day, play of, uh, of play of pure embarrassments. The other day I, I oh, remember, sorry, I'm not reading the names of these things. Remembered old buddy, found gyro block, and memorable gyro block. The other day I accidentally threw away my son's favorite toy. He wouldn't stop crying. Some things that seem unimportant to adults are treasures as kids. When I was a boy, I'm sure I felt the same way about my favorite things. Now my family is my treasure. No matter how old you grow, you will never remember the treasures of your childhood. Take this gift. Lost Gyro Block. When I observe this object, I can't stop myself from tearing up. I wonder why. It's hard to say, but it might be because some of these items remind me of the past. Remember your treasure toys, you took such good care of them, but some broke away. For some reason, this green gyro brings back those memories and causes your heart to quiver. Favorite gyro block. When I was a kid, I always wanted my toys to be blue. Blue is such a cool color. Children throughout the universe are ca captivated by the very thought of this cool blue disc. Pocketate tour makers are swamped with orders for this popular item. Treasure gyro block. Yesterday, we ventured into the spooky hole. Previously, all of the organisms we encountered were messed together in one cave, massed together in one cave. Had I not divided the Pikmin by color and utilized their unique abilities, I never would have made it out alive. In memory of my Darwin adventure, I've named that hole the Hole of Heroes. Feel the joy that only collects that only collectors can savor. Happiness for those who have found them all. Enjoy this wonderful feeling to your heart's content. Now I've got all the Duracell batteries. Proton AA. 
This object resembles the first treasure I found on this planet, so it holds certain sentimental value to me. However, I've just noticed that the size is slightly different. Sometime I should try I should take the time to read my previous treasure logbook. It's good to reflect on the past. Some enigmatic energy unknown on the Hakate is on Hakate is trapped inside. Who couldn't use more energy? Durable energy cell. This cryptic item exhibits an unbelievable quantity of stored dormant energy. The civilization that created this must have advanced tremendously when they discovered this powerful new energy source. If I were to take this technology back home, how would it affect the future of Hakate? Human aid history is one big scramble for energy, and this is a colossal fountain of it. Has the change to renewable energy on Hakate already begun? We machines watch. Courage Reactor. We've recovered our first treasure. Amazingly, the Pikmin remembered how to salvage it. I can't understand their adorable language, and I don't know what they're thinking. Yet I'm so happy to see them. When I crashed on this planet, the Pikmin helped me locate my missing ship parts. In my darkest hour, the Pikmin were there for me. Now that I'm reunited with them, I know everything will be alright. It will, right? <laughs> Physical energy is not the only, the only kind. The energy dearest to us that made us love and courage. Fuel Reservoir. The ship has a lot of self-importance for a machine. Apparently, machines can exhibit human characteristics after all. Perhaps they even have a soul? If this is true, then maybe you can work them into the ground until their spirit is broken and they stop giving you lips. Oh, lip. Oh no, I'm turning into the president. <laughs> According to my measurements, almost no energy should remain within, yet some does. The energy can draw from the matter has a limit, but the energy of the heart is yours. Perhaps that is the case here. This proves that machines have will and determination. Drone supplies. Yesterday, the ship accused me of sampling all the food we've been collecting. That ship has a lot of nerve. This food pack makes you want to throw all dietary restrictions out the window and take a bite. Patience tester. When I see a closed container, I cannot help myself. I feel I must open it and see what's inside. But when opening it, it can lose its value. I guess I'll just have to use my imagination. This can this calls out to be open, peeked inside, and tasted. This temptation-filled item is perfect for those who wish to test the strength of their resolve. Yeah, good luck opening it, though. Endless repository. Everyone makes mistakes. Sometimes desire overpowers reason. At least that is what I've told myself when I sampled this salty snack. No matter how much you eat, this magic container is never empty. So go ahead, have a bite. Captain Olimar and his corny and his corn cr crony used this excuse. They later issued a written apology. <laughs> oh, that's great. Fruit guard. Among the treasures we've collected, many of them have strange scrollings on them. Unfortunately, the alien writings are indecipherable, but the pictures can be understood easily enough. This one seems to have a picture of a fruit on it. Ah, if that's the case, then this canister must contain sweet nectar. A sweet taste will hurt. A quick taste will hurt. A taste of knowledge from a foreign world. This container holds juices of primitive fruit. If you are a devotee of genuine taste, you cannot pass it up. Nutrient silo. What a fascinating storage container. There's more food crammed in here than I could eat in a lifetime. Louie, however. <laughs> That's another story. A food storage tank of bewitchingly titanic size. As legend has it, this item is so captivating that the discoverer tried to claim it for himself. <laughs> yep, I believe it. Stringent container. The ship's pool is so cluttered and disorganized. I wonder if we're actually finding new treasures or if we're just rediscovering old ones. A packed to the brim food container. According to the legend, the discoverer of this item found it and immediately began to drool. Survival ointment. In a survival situation, the most important things are water, courage, and a first aid kit. I've got water and an endless supply of courage, but I don't have a first aid kit. Sometimes I don't have a lot of motivation either. I may be a daring explorer, but sometimes I just want to loaf around all day and sleep. Wait, what if the president reads this journal? Uh, ahem. Uh, I'd never dream of slacking on the job, yeah. <laughs> Must-have medical item for explorers. If you need powerful results, this is for you. It even comes with a testimonial from our employee. Use this and fear nothing ever again. 
healing cast. I'm shocked. I can't believe this is the only stock of medical supplies we've got. If one of us were to get ill or injured, we'd be in serious trouble. We'll have to make sure to watch our step and always wash our hands. We could also search for medicine among the treasures we've collected. A dependable item in crucial times. Stay safe by keeping one at home and on one at the office. It is indispensable. If you are health conscious, then buy this. Abstract masterpiece. This is a truly heart-wrenching design. I've never seen been moved, been this moved by a piece of art. Every time I view it, I can't stop crying. The ship mocks me by squirting engine coolant at me, but it's obviously just jealous that it can't shed any tears. This is something that machines cannot comprehend. The heart of art, the soul of creativity. If you understand the appeal of this design, your heightened senses are at space pilot level. Optical illustration. I've noticed that some of the objects we collect have undeniable similarities. Perhaps the treasures were revered by an ancient civilization. There are many items that look like this one, but the contents are profoundly different. Those in the know are aware of the differences. This particular item should please any buyer. Thirst activator. How odd. When I gaze at this puzzling pattern, I have a vision of nature. First, I thought this was the planet's ecosystem. This planet's ecosystem was alien and unnatural, but now I've learned to fully appreciate its beauty. However, it still can't compare to the stunning natural landscape of Polkatate. I hope I can return to my home soon. Natural beauty fills this design, and merely viewing in insights a riotous thirst. How about it? So both of these are from Treetop, so that's interesting. Look, you got Treetop canned apple juice, and then you've got a lid from uh, a Treetop, uh, what is it, uh, twist to open, um, maybe a bottle of apple juice? I'm not sure, but they're both from Treetop, so that's interesting. Yellow Taste Tyrant. According to recent statistics, the elderly people in Hakatate love to eat sweets. Despite them, young people are eating all the spicy food they can get their hands on. Just looking at this artifact makes my mouth feel spicy. When I bring it back, it's sure to be all the rage with surly teens everywhere. Tonight, I think I'll practice signing autographs. Behold, the overwhelming power of monochrome yellow. Spice spiciness fills both the eyes and the mouth. Irresistible. It's a mustard lid. Dannon, fruit on the bottom yogurt. When I crash landed on this planet, I got sick of eating only Hockatate noodles every day. This time is no different. We didn't have time to properly prepare some tasty ingredients. I can't stop drooling when I look at this evocative object. Hungry explorers must learn to use their imaginations in the absence of food. Uncontrollable drooling, uncontrollable drooling, cannot stop, cannot stop. Interfacing with this gives me a non-stop case of drooling. I lie, machines cannot drool. <laughs> Obviously. Jar of uh, lid for classic pickles. Staring at the symbol tantalizes my taste buds. I've never observed this before, but my sight and sense of taste appear to be connected. Perhaps this is some kind of physiological advertising. I'll have to tell the ship about it. Gherkin Gate. This cryptic design contains a link between sight and taste that is unknown or cognitive. According to the physiology of unknown shapes, gazing at this will let you taste the unknown. Alien Billboard. There are several different patterns drawn on this object's surface. They appear to be characteristics of letters, but I can't make any sense of them. This is just an educated case, but I wonder if this was some kind of bulletin board? The size of the object seems about right for it. Perhaps this is some ancient billboard, perhaps not. Its authenticity may be in question, but you can use it for inspiration. You may become a top flight executive. Shoe polish. And so I found out this is not actually lid from an M&M jar, as previously believed. This is from a uh, uh, container of Wilson's tennis balls. So it's W for Wilson, so activity arouser. This strange object makes me want to dance. I can't fight it. I must dance. Hey, this isn't so bad. I've been packing on the pounds, and this could be a great way to get some exercise. One, two, cha-cha-cha. This esoteric design will make viewers want to get up and move for no apparent reason. This is perfect for people who want to diet, but can never seem to get started. Hypnotic platter. 
and I move on to the uh, to the uh, to the bottle caps. Strange story. When I inspected this item on the planet's surface, I was suddenly overcome with such raging thirst that I thought I might fall unconscious. Having no tasty beverage at hand, I had to resort to licking the condensation from the inside of my helmet. I feel such shame. The bizarre insignia on this seriated platter inspires in inexplicable feelings of pleasure that can only be replicated by long, cool drink. Or so I'm told. You chocolate cola. When people study mysterious objects, they tend to overthink everything and get easily stumped. For example, this is just a lid. Or is it? After much evaluation and processing, this item has been classified as a massive cap. What powerful force might it have held back at one time? Only the ages know. Chocolate Yoohoo Cola. Pondering Emblem. Another Yoohoo Chocolate Cola lid. There are many things I've encountered on this planet that defy explanation. According to the ship's analysis, this object is extremely valuable. Maybe I'll buy it, but I'm not so sure though. I get the feeling that the ship is swindling me. Nah, the ship would never scam me. I'm the captain. Oh, it would totally scam you. One glance and you will sit for hours trying to decipher the ultimate purpose of this item. Therein lies its value. It is actually a guide to the world of deep thinking. Happiness emblem. Squirts. Or is it squirt? Oh wait, what, what is that? It's... Yeah, it's squirt. So it's the grapefruit soda. When you grow up and get a job, your time doesn't belong to you anymore. To make up for that, you have to learn to appreciate the simple pleasures of life. Looking at this pattern we found today makes me feel a little less miserable. This is today's simple pleasure. Choose your own happiness, find good things in each day, maintain a positive attitude and good things will come your way. That's what one feels when viewing this cheerful emblem. Quenching emblem. I often brag about my inexhaustible supply of self-control, but when I peer at this treasure, I can't help but want to take a drink. Oh yeah, 7-Up, you need a 7-Up. An odd symbol that causes thirst cravings in all they who view it. Its secrets cannot be deciphered. And now a Dr. Pepper bottle cap, the drought ender. Today I delivered an impromptu lecture on the basics of wilderness survival. As Louis Superior, it's my responsibility to teach him these skills. Walking around as much as we do generates an intense thirst, so water becomes very important. I told Louis that we have to ration our water carefully. That's what I was thinking until I found this. I was so parched that I couldn't help myself. I drank all the water in the canteen and tasted so good. But when I turned around, Louie gave me a cold stare. <laughs> gulp, gulp, gulp. <sighs> Give in to your primal feelings and drink to your heart's content. Gaze upon this design and your throat will ache for satisfaction. Why is that? Tell me, please. <laughs> you wouldn't understand, ship. RC Cola Lid, the creative inspiration. Fascinating. I keep staring at the symbol. I know it'll come up with a brilliant idea for a new product. Stare at this long enough and good ideas are sure to surface. If you are a casual person who relies on others to achieve your goals, then this imagination support item was made for you. Alright, now we're getting now uh, all that's left to examine are the uh, treasures that uh, that give us abilities and then the Titan Weevil treasures. So this is a spherical atlas. The purple Pikmin were somehow able to carry this massive treasure. Today we measured their physical strength using the ship's onboard beefometer. It seems they have ten times the weight of physical power of any other Pikmin. Uh, when I throw them, they land with a resounding thud. I decided to commemorate the, the cave I countered them by naming it the Emergence Cave. The surface designs on this item are the map of salvage uh, of a savage planet. This alone makes it valuable, but that is not all. Embedded with microchip filled with, filled with secret, incredibly detailed data. With this item, you'll know everything about this, that, and the other thing too. <laughs> Geographic projection. The interior of this hemisphere contains a chip coated with charts detailing a new region. I explored this forest the last time I was here, but it's clear that it has undergone some dramatic changes. The plants and animals have also evolved significantly. I've given this forest a new name, the Awakening Wood. Mu I must begin to form a hypothesis to explain why this forest changed so rapidly. If you have both pieces, does the value increase? Do you want it? Need it? Crave it? You should. This is the ultimate storehouse of geographic data in the known universe. 
prototype detector. Today we searched a subterranean layer swarming with carnivorous bugs. The name Hole of Beasts immediately came to mind. The convenient contraption I found there was, has become an invaluable treasure-seeking tool. When it approaches a piece of treasure, the gadget beeps and the needle moves to the right. When all of the treasure in the area has been collected, the device powers down. When we left Hokitate, I thought we'd never be able to pay off the company's debt. But thanks to this gadget, I'm feeling optimistic about the outcome of this daring mission. Is this a miracle gadget born of universal desire or a machine manufactured by a master of Dimension X? Whatever it is, it reacts to treasure. Five-man knapsack. I'd love to lay down in the grass, bask in the sun, and take an afternoon nap. But with all these Pikmin following me, I can never seem to relax. I should remember to press C to dismiss the Pikmin and then press hold C to take a nap. But the last time I tried it, the Pikmin picked me up while I slept and care and uh, and and carried me away to their onion. Hold your space horses, Pikmin! I'm not a pallet or a piece of treasure. And then I woke up. Great galaxies! It was all just a dream, wasn't it? Nope, that really happened. <laughs> Do you want to nap in luxury like this, Federal? Uh, feudal lord this lifestyle assistant will help you do it tests on your tests on your employees were very on our employees were very positive their bizarre dreams were an added bonus root knuckles uncharted planets like this one are often teeming with hazardous fauna the pikmin are usually nearby to defend me but are there are times when i need to lay down lay lay down the law with my own hands for example if a creature were to try to eat me i'd have to beat it down I dream about that all the time. <laughs> oh, we did it. We did it a few times in the game. We fought without Pikmin. In the plume of flame, this steel fur fist li flies and smashes its targets to bit, but the recoil is severe. Captain Olimar suffers from shoulder pain, so he uses it without the rocket booster. <laughs> Pundit Appendage. The, the aromatic object secretes a tangy odor that can knock out a bull wax. I'm with the ship on this one. I don't want to touch it either. But I must for the sake of the company and my family. I must summon the strength to carry on. Is this the remains of some giant creature? Its color is striking, but its stench is horrific. Could it be dangerous? The true essence of things in the natural world is often disguised. Be fooled and die. Fool or be killed. This is the law of survival. It's a baby booty. But still, a baby is even still giant to them because they're so microscopically small. Stellar Orb. The technology behind this impressive gadget is totally unknown to my people, but it appears to replicate the intense excuse me, solar beams of the sun. Space, space exploration has given me a ghostly power. Maybe I'll use this orb to catch a few rays. This tanning machine is based on primitive science principles. Come, you, pal come, you pallid recluses and sun-starved hermits. You too can have a healthy, stylish glow. Forged Courage. I found this marvelous alloy in a hole swarming with bulwarks. On that adventure, I even clashed with Emperor Bulbax. In honor of my triumph over that appallingly beast beast, I named the hole the Bulbax Kingdom. A heart-resistant heart alloy forged in the fires of justice and passion. Wear it and feel courage is burned. You have nothing to fear. Due to horrid ventilation, this is not suited to sweaty beings. This non-conductive substance has many uses. I have discovered it can even erase pencil marks. Oh, it's an eraser! Dream I was, I could, we couldn't figure out what the hell this thing was. It's an eraser. Okay. It is a dream material, but the more it is used, the more it crumbles. The same is true of dreams. Yeah, it gets smaller as you erase stuff on it. I found this metal treasure in the gut of an avian snake. It took real courage to drop on into that dark den. Danger's where I do best. In honor of my brave clash with that feathered serpent, I named that hole the Snagger Hole. You cannot see it and you cannot touch it, but it is definitely here and there. What, you ask? Whatever this suit is fortified by, whatever this suit is fortified by, that is what. I cannot believe there is a better material than what I am constructed of. Amplified amplifier. 
Today we searched a deep underground structure that was completely covered in tile. I have no idea what it was originally intended for, but I've decided to call it the shower room. <laughs> deep within, I clashed with sleep bug that coughed up this conical curiosity. Your voice is weak. It does not carry. No one notices you. If this is true, then this item is for you. Starting today, you are a gym teacher. You will never be ignored again. Professional Noisemaker I recently took a team of Luke Pikmin on an expedition to explore a submerged cavern. While exploring this watery cavern, watery cavern, I encountered some very strange phenomena. It was such a strange place that I'm still wondering if it was just a dream. I found this curious treasure in that cavern, so it was just an illusion. I'm even so if it was an illusion, I'm even more confused. I named that confounding place the Submerged Castle. Noisier than a spaceship, this wonderful item will make your miserable life 120% more exciting. Six more treasures, guys. The key. This item came from a personal treasure hoard of a massive Pikmin devouring spider. The whole cave was crawling within all kinds of fierce with all kinds of fearsome creatures. I decided to name that eerie cave the Citadel of Spiders. The ship can't stand bugs. Whenever I ask it to store a specimen for salvage, it salvage it threatens to stage a mutiny. This shape, I have encountered it somewhere before. No, I must be mistaken. Yes, I am mistaken. Thoughts like these strike who see this candle who see this catalytic form. You can feel its immense power. Shock Therapist. This shocker was one of several weapons wielded by the nightmarish Titan people. It allowed the creature to smite Pikmin with zaps of lightning. This nanotech device gathers negative ions in the atmosphere and converts them into energy. It then releases that energy. Zap! Just to use it to relieve muscle soreness and joint stress. One warning, however, it does render the user unconscious. Flare Cannon. This scorching mechanism was used, once used by the monstrous Titan people. The roasting app apparatus spews hot jets of flame. I can't keep Louie away from it. He keeps trying to use it to cook sausages and caramelized creme brulee. Yeah, I'll bet you Louie would that's so Louie to use this thing to cook things. In the compressed air cylinder of this flamethrower, liquid gas is lit, producing the fire that gives the weapon its name. It is very dangerous, and good kids know not to play with it. In case you wonder, it cannot be used as a substitute for spaceship rockets. It should never be used to cook sausages. Never. <laughs> that means you, Louie. Three more. Comedy Bomb. This fiendish component was used by the Titan Eagle. Although it was once a primitive chemical weapon, it is now a weapon of mass hilarity. You cannot see it, you cannot smell it, yet this weapon would steal your life given the chance. At least it used to, until I shrewdly exchanged, until I shrewdly exchanged its poison gas for hilarious laughing gas. Crafted with an eye for safety, it is the funniest weapon we have ever devised. Monster Pump. This savage water pump was just one of many weapons wielded by the Titan people. This pump is capable of spraying jets of hyper-pressurized water. This item automatically detects subterranean waterways, even if the water is buried a mile deep. This monster pump drives the liquid at any distance, and its almost uncontrollable power is fantastic. Last one, guys! Finally, at last, here we go. King of Bugs, also known as Lou. Louie is back. Somehow he survived a horrific ordeal with a freakishly large weapon wielding with the freakishly large weapon wielding Titan people. I entered the hole with an army of ferocious Pikmin, uh, grimly determined to save Louie from the Titan people. But it seems that he was perfectly fine all along. I can't understand how he managed to avoid being eaten. Hmm. He's always had an unusually close connection with insects, and I know he loves to cook them. Maybe he wasn't kidnapped after all. Could he have been controlling that beast all along? I think so. No, that's craziness. Although he does insist that we address him by his proper title, the King of Bugs, now. Yeah, yeah, I think he was definitely controlling it. The new employee of Hulkitate Freight, Louis, is often silent. Nobody knows what thoughts lurk his mind. He appears to operate on the same wavelength as insects, often with dangerous results. After he was kidnapped, he somehow managed to hijack a colossal insect's brain. Also, he was controlling the Titan Dweevil, huh? 
geez, this whole time I thought that was just a fan theory, but nope, it seems like it is all but confirmed. Louie is one with the insect, truly is king of the bugs. Okay guys, we finally did it! Two hours later, uh, we managed to uh, get through all 80 uh, of the uh, creatures in Piclopedia and all 201 treasures in the in the treasure hoard, uh, as well as reading all the notes for, of, uh, from Olimar, Louie, and uh, the ship, so uh, yeah, so uh, so yeah, um, I knew I didn't want to make this a live stream because I'm not technically playing, I'm just reading, so I just made this a bonus episode, so uh, but I, but I did want to show all these off before putting Pikmin 2 to rest, so that's it, we're officially done with Pikmin 2 uh, after this, uh, so join me for the next Pikmin adventure when we uh, continuing the Pikmin marathon of the summer of Pikmin when we play Pikmin 3. And with that being said, guys, if you enjoyed the video, drop a like, let me know in the comments what you thought of this game. Also, be sure to share this video with your friends, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss the next uh, live stream or bonus video. That's always and until next time, guys, this is the Ultimate Frozen Fan, signing off. Peace.